Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessings, everyone. My name is Rafael Chamaka Jere from here in in Turin, Italy. Welcome to this much awaited debate, this Bible challenge debate between our brother Oje Giwamu and Brother Monde Oyekachi Timothy. And the title of this debate today is is the son of God co-equal with the father this this debate have been on the pipeline for a long time and we can't wait to bring it on and tonight we're having a fantastic brother from the United States that will be moderating tonight our brother Russell Oyewole so I'm going to hand over to brother Russell to do justice to this awesome debate. Thank you, brethren. Enjoy it. Please hit the share button. Share, share, share. All right. Welcome, everyone, to this debate. You have a very, very um, peaceful and very. Sorry, your volume. Your volume. Um, peaceful and civil conversation. And so today's debate is between our brother OJ and our brother Monday, and my name is Russell. I'll be moderating. And before we begin debate, let's have a, a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to thank you for this opportunity to go into your word. Uh, we're not debating to, uh, in, in a strife manner. We're not debating with a, with a heart of malice, but we're just trying to expound your word so we can all come to a better understanding. We pray that the people that will be listening will be blessed. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Okay, so it will be about two and a half, two hours and 15 minutes. And the breakdown of the debate is as such. There will be a 20-minute opening statement by each person, followed by a 10-minute rebuttal by each person, followed by another five-minute rebuttal. And after that, we'll take a short five-minute break. We'll come back, do a cross-examination, and then after that, we'll open up the floor to Q&A from people who are viewing. With that being said, let me introduce our debaters this day. Uh, Brother OJ is popularly known as the Watchman. He's originally from Nigeria, but now he resides in the UK with his lovely family. He is the administrator of the BBF Back to Biblical Faith group, a group committed to contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Exposing falsehoods within the church. He's a very strong. He has a very strong passion for the Word of God. He encourages true born again Christians and believers to stand up against the one man pastoral system. Uh, thank you for stating the, the view that you're supporting. Now it makes it easy to state um, to read Brother Monday's bio. His name is uh, Timothy Onyekachi Monday, a brother in Christ, an accountant by training, and an educational consultant by profession. He strongly believes that the Son of God is co-equal with the Father, and he's going to prove uh, his case this day. With that being said, we would like to open the floor, um, and the first person to give their 20-minute opening statement. Brother Ode, please, um, your 20 minutes starts now. Please give your opening statement. All right, thank you. Um, please, I'll be making some presentations so uh, you might not be seen for a while. Uh, let me also know at every five minute uh, time, um, time um, break so that I'll know what the time is like because I may not be able to see it at the time. Um, so okay. I would um, be making some presentations, like I said, and I'll try to be quite uh, quick because I know that we have very limited time. So let me just um, let me just bring up my document. Sorry. I didn't know I was going to start first. You just uh, said that, but well, um, it doesn't matter if that's uh, what um, he wants. Normally, the affirmative, the one who is the, the orthodox position is the one who goes first, the popular orthodox position, but it I doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. I would, um, I would start first. So um, I want to be presenting, and I'm, 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 uh, if you look at the, uh, the slide, I'm going to be establishing my case using um, certain principles and um, I'm sure uh, people you will agree with me with this some of the principles I'll be establishing here so the debate here is that is the son of God co-equal with the father 
So, um, and just by the way, let me also say that I also did offer Monday the op op option of sending me materials and slides as well, so that um, the viewers will know. So it doesn't seem like um, it is just a, a kind of advantage I have, but he said he will not be using any slides. Anyway, so let's go on. So the first thing I want to say, because time is going, uh, so I just want to go straight to the point now. Why is this issue important for us? Why should we be looking at this issue? Because a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, why are you not winning souls? How is this going to help? Because this issue alongside with the Trinity, which I first dealt with in the last debate, um, is part of what has caused the division within the body of Christ. You see, the spurious doctrines that have been introduced to the Christian faith by a church already on its way to apostasy is what has led to this division. The Bible says we should be of one mind and speak the same thing. But how come we, we can't speak the same thing? Why are we not speaking the same thing? <coughs> That's why we have to be looking at this issue. All right? It's a very important issue because... Uh, like I said in the last debate I had, there are two issues that make the doctrine of the Trinity false. The first is the concept of, of the oneness of God, which is a false concept of oneness that defines God as a nature rather than as a being and as a person. And then the second concept is the fact that there's a claim that there are co-equals with the Father. So what I want to show today is that there are no co-equals with the Father. And it's a false doctrine. And as long as we do not go back to the biblical faith, which teaches that we have only one God and is the Father, and he's above all with no co-equals and Jesus Christ is his son. We are going to continue to have this conflict. So that's why we should have this debate. That's why we should resolve this issue. Because prior to Nicaea and thereafter, there was no one who taught that anyone was co-equal with the father. The apostles never taught that. The, the early church fathers never taught that. Nobody taught that. Everybody just taught a simple gospel that we had one God, the father, and his son, Jesus Christ. If we preached, went around preaching this gospel as simple as it is, there will be unity in the body of Christ. But the false doctrine of the Trinity alongside the claim that you have co-equals with the Father, including the Son, has what has led to this, uh, this problem. The same problems Muslims are having. That is why many of them can't embrace the faith because they look into the Christian faith, they look into the Christian Bible and they cannot see this false doctrine. So here, Monday is going to be presenting an argument that he needs to be able to show from the scriptures, not just from conjecture. So that's why this topic is important. The second aspect is that we need to now, I want to now, first of all, look at the concept of God. I think one of the problems a lot of Christians have is that when they talk about God, they think that just mentioning God means God Almighty. All right? So they, a lot of times they don't make any distinction between the various contexts in which that word God is used. And that's why they can't understand why Jesus, even though he's called God, cannot be said to be God in the same context the Father is. But before I do that, I, don't, I don't, just don't want that to be like something for my idea. I want to, uh, just for my mind, I want to us to look at, um, I want us to quickly look at the lexicon, lexicon if I can find that. Um, okay, so, right here, I'm going, this is the Blue Letter Bible. And uh, Monday, even if you can't see it, I'm sure you can hear me. So the, 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 the whole idea is to refute the point I'm making. So even if you're not seeing, but I want to show them so they can see. So you see this word, Theos, that is God, that is called God. Look at how it's translated God. I want to show you that there are different contexts in which that word is used. So the fact that you just see, oh, that they said Jesus is God, he's called God. We are dealing with the translation. That word God has different meanings. And then you're going to see that the context in which the Father is called God is not the same as the context in which the Son is called God. Now, if you look at the first definition here, you see Theos, you see, look at that God, God, small God here. And then the first outline here, it said outline of biblical usage. So this is how God has been used throughout the scriptures. It says a God, a goddess, general name of, of, of deities and divinities. Then <coughs> number two, I'm sorry to say, I said that in my last debate. This is why I said a lot of the, the websites are have already been adulterated with Trinitarian concepts. All right. So it says, the, it says here, the number two, it says the Godhead Trinity. But this is the injection of this, of this, uh, the one who owns this uh, site because there's a Trinitarian site. It says the uh, Christ, the second person of the Trinity, Holy Spirit. You will never see where Theos is used to refer to the Trinity. I challenge anybody. But let's go on because that's not the point. I just, the point I want to establish here is that the word Theos translated as God has different contextual meanings. And if we don't appreciate that, we can never really understand why when Jesus is called God and the Father is called God, there are different contexts. Just as when the Father is called Lord and the Son is called Lord, there are different contexts. When the Father is called Lord, that context of his Lordship re relates to him being our God. When the Son is called Lord, the context of his Lordship relates to him being our Master, the Messiah. There are two different contexts. That's why when David said, the Lord said unto my Lord, there were two different contexts. Sit at my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool. Now, it goes on to say, it's number three is what I want us to see here now. 
So theos, how God, the word God is used in different contexts. It says, spoken of the only true God. You see that? Spoken of the only true God. So this is a particular context of Godhood that they use. But you see, English is so limited. What you just see is God, God. So you say, oh, when they call Jesus God and they call the Father God, you think it's the same context, but it's not. One is in the context of being the only true God. The other, which refers to Jesus, is in the context of being him being a representative. And you're going to see that. I'm showing this so that you see that these are not just my ideas. These are biblical facts. Now, it says that this is spoken, number three, you see that? It's spoken of the only true God. It also refers to the things of God. It also refers to his counsels and interests and things due him. Now look at number four. The four, four. Look at the other context here. Whatever can in any respect be likened unto God or resemble him in any way. A, God's representative or vice regent of his magistrate and judges. So you see, these this, this are biblical facts. Now, when the father is called God, it's referred to this number three here. You see that? Spoken of the only true God. When Jesus is called God, it's referred to number four here. Whatever can in any respect be likened unto God or resemble him in any way. God's representative of Israel. And is this just, just my idea? No, it's not. That's how the Bible describes him. So let's look at, um, um, if we could go to, I have so many screens here, so I have to find the particular one. Where it says, anyway, I, I think I'll just quote it because I really have limited time. It says that uh, when Hebrews describes uh, uh, Jesus Christ, it, it, it describes him as the, the, the brightness of his glory and the express representation of his being. So why is, that imp why is that important? Because it establishes the fact that that word God also re re represents God's representative or vice regent. So, and that's what the scriptures call Jesus. The image of God, the representation of his being, the exact representation of his being. So, and you can see here it says God's representation of vice regent. So, I'm not just cooking up things for my head. I'm trying to establish facts. All right. So, I need to first establish the various contexts and conce concepts of God. Now, the other thing I want to now establish is the Logos. You see, Jesus Christ. Who was Jesus Christ before the word was made flesh? Clearly, I wouldn't have the time to go back into... Um, making reference to the, the Greek uh, lexicon, but I'm sure many of you who were aware uh, when I did the presentation on uh, the what John 1.1, 1, 1, you could clearly see that John 1.1, 1, 1, the Logos refers to the saints of God, the word of God, the saints. And if you go to any Greek uh, ma manuscript, you will never find that the word meant person in any way. There was no, no place in, the, in, in Greek, in the usage of that word Logos, that it referred to a person. It, was, it had to do with the speech, the thoughts, the mind, the idea, or something spoken. Every time Logos was used, it had to do with the sayings of God. And I, I showed that from the Greek um, 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 uh, manuscript. So, now, I want us to move on from that. So, I needed to first establish that there are, there are various contexts of God. Now, and that Jesus Christ, before the word was made flesh, was the Logos of God. He was the spoken word of God. He was an attribute of God within God. Not, not as a distinct person, but one that was expressing the Godhead of the Father. That is exactly how Jesus was described. That's why you will never find in any place in the Old Testament where you find anybody like an eternal God the Son speaking to anybody. Now, before we proceed now, I want us to now go straight into the concept of co-equality. How are we supposed to begin to review and deal with this issue? It's very important. Now, you see, Monday has a concept of co-equality that is quite, in my opinion, meaningless. It's as such that if you were to go with this argument, you can never meaningfully uh, come to a conclusion with regards to this debate. So let's look at what co-equality, what, what we are dealing with the issue of whether Jesus is co-equal with the Father. So we need to establish some principles here. All right. So we need to establish some principles. So what is what does co-equality mean? What does co-equality mean? So according Bro, to Dick, sorry, you have, you have 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Wow. Left. Time goes so fast. Well, Co-equality simply means it says equal with another or each other in rank, ability, extent. So what Monday we're trying to prove today from the scriptures, not from conjecture, that the son is co-equal with the father, okay, in rank, ability, extent, etc. And he has to prove that from scriptures, explicit scriptures. He's not going to say, oh, uh, before Abraham I am. He's not going to... Implicit verses that we will not agree on, we cannot use those verses. We need to be, from a doctrinal perspective, he needs to prove that. Now, I want you to see this. I have to be very fast. I don't know how many people can see this. Now, this is the rating of students here. And in this first example, if we go back to, to this, they said, uh, as an example of co-equal, they said, the two top students were co-equal. How were they able to come to that conclusion? They were able to come to that conclusion not by taking an isolated aspect of 
one student and comparing it with that aspect of another student to now say they were co-equal. No, they always looked at, they always, for us to address this issue, when you say this person, these two students are co-equal, is because they, they have matched up everything together and they find, found out that they are at par. All right? Now, if you look at this uh, um, <coughs> chart here, I have three students, John, Anne, and James. I want you to tell me who the two that are co-equal. For time, I know you may not be able to look at it, but look at it very well. Look at the scores. You would agree with me that Anne and James are co-equal. Why? Because if you notice in maths, they both had 100-100. English, they both had 90-90. In science, they had 80-80. But you can say, but none of them is co-equal with John. All right? Because John had 100% in all. But what Monday is going to do here, which is a very false form of association and, and resolving this issue, he's going to tell you that Anne and James are co-equal with, with uh, John because they both had 100% in maths. But you can't do it that way. You can't use a selective aspect of co-equality and then use that as an overall to say this is co-equal with this. For you to be able to do that, you have to look at the gener generality overall and then come to that conclusion. That is the only way we can mean meaningfully resolve this issue. So if I move to the next slide, these are, these are two, two generators. You have a tw 20 kVA generator and a 5 kVA generator. Now, Monday is going to argue that, oh, yes, the, you see, the one, the, 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 the one kVA generator is co-equal with the 20k generator because they both have the nature as generators. But that's a meaningless argument because we know that is not true. You cannot come to that conclusion without looking at the overall capacity. You have to look at something as a whole before you come to that conclusion. You cannot just use a selective aspect of the nature of something and then say it's co-equal because they might have similarities in that regard. No, we all know a 1 kVA generator is not co-equal with a 20k ge generator. And the, the way you easily know that is try to power your, <laughs> your AC with a 1 kva generator that's when you know that it's not co-equal so it's not just by having a selective uh, uh, co-equality we all know that four is greater than two but read it but to, to my amazement monday is going to argue and tell you that no two is equal with four he said that in one of our debates he said, he said two is co-equal with four because they have the same nature as numbers come on even my eight-year-old son when he's doing his his uh his uh his um his um lessons and they ask him arrange figures in the, uh, in, the in the in the order of which one is higher he already knows that four is equal with two he doesn't ask the question to say um what do you mean how do you mean co-equal do you mean by nature no because they know four is greater than two period it is that simple it's very very straightforward but monday is going to argue and tell you things and this was in his uh, in one of his posts he says that the father is greater than the son only in terms of position and function and he also even said to my amazement that adam was also equal with god in nature <laughs> how could adam have been co-equal with god in nature when adam could sin adam could be, could be tempted he could fall and god could not be god could not so you see these are some of the challenges we have we have to be very uh, practical about um about co-equality so when we are talking about co-equality we need to look at the whole issue from a, a holistic perspective and not from a subjective perspective because if you look at it from a subjective perspective you can never determine that anything is co-equal with anything because i can always make anything co-equal with anything for example i can tell you an ant is co-equal with a lion uh, because they, they are living things i can tell you that i can tell you anything is co-equal with anything as long as i can just find something similar so the principle that we must establish here in determining this, this issue is to find out whether overall in terms of the ability because we saw the definition in terms of the ranking and everything, when you put the father together compared with the son, is the son co-equal with the father? And the answer is no. Now, let's go into direct scriptures because at the end of the day, our time is fleeting and I won't have time. I mean, this there's so much to say, but um, I want us to look at scriptures. Now, um, let's look at what, what greater means. Greater means... This is from the, from the, from the uh, Greek um, uh, lexicon. When Jesus said, my father is greater than I, what does greater mean? If you look at it here, it says... It's from the word mason. And it means when Jesus said, my father is greater. So greater can be greater, larger, elder, stronger. So when Jesus said, my father is greater than I, any way you want to look at this, whether you're going to be greater, larger, elder, stronger, Jesus is saying that the father is greater, full stop, and there was no context to it. Now let's look at very uh, direct verses. Like I said, time is fleeting. Uh, so many things one needs to say. Uh, but how many means do I have? Bro. Five more minutes. Okay, I have, I have uh, five more minutes. Okay, so I want to read this now. Um, it, it, um, so this is from John uh, 28. So I'm, I'm, re I'm, I'm now referring to a very direct, explicit scriptures that has no contextualization. So there's no argument about it. This should settle the debate. That issue of fully God, 100% God and 100% man is a device that Monday cannot, will not be able to prove from anywhere. He got that from the Trinitarian Creed. They fabricated it, but not one. Of the apostles or the church fathers believe that he said what remember what i told you i'm going away but we'll come back to you again if you really love me you will be happy that i'm going to my father who is greater than i, than I am full stop that was an is an explicit 
absolute statement, no contextualization. He didn't, for us to begin to say, hey, he was talking about his humanity, not his divinity. It's your conjecture. You can't prove that. That is your own revelation. We will not accept it. We have the written word here that is explicit. There is no controversy about it. Jesus never had any contextualization to that. When he said the Father is greater than I, there is no aspect of the Son's being that's excluded from that personal pronoun I. Everything about the Son is included in that statement I. He goes on to say, is that just a proof text? No. Jesus, he also said that, he said what? The, my Father, this is John 10, 9, 29, the Father who is giving them to me is greater than all. No man can snatch them out of his hand. You see that again? So this, I'm, I'm quoting direct, explicit, I'm not going to, I am the first and the last. You see, he has to be God. Uh, before Abraham, I am. He has to be God. Those are implicit verses. Now, um, Paul also, Paul also confirmed them what Jesus said when he said um, uh, in, um, in Ephesians, uh, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 4, verse 6, where he said, One God and Father of all, who is above all. You see that? Who is above all. All right. Now we also see here but by implicit by implicit now I've gone to explicit. We also see by explicit verses Jesus cannot be co-equal with the Father because only the Father himself is self-existent. That is so clear. Jesus said in five, uh, John 5, 26, For as the Father had life in himself, even so he has granted. You see the difference? The Father innately has life, but he grants the Son to have life in himself. That's different. They cannot be co-equal. Jesus also said something very profound. Very profound here. He said, um, if I can find that one, he said, uh, listen to this. This Jesus is not self-existent because he made a very explicit statement here in John 6, uh, 57. He said, just as the living father sent me and I live because of the father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. So in the same way, we live because of Jesus. This Jesus is telling us that in the same way he lives because of the father. That is not self-existent. So the father is the only true God. And that's why Jesus Christ recognized him in John 17 as the only true God. How many minutes do I have? Two minutes. I have two, two minutes. minutes. Now, I want to also show, haven't showed that, that um, if I can see that, that there was not a single one of the uh, early church fathers that believed that Jesus was co equal with the Father. And I want to end with reading Tertullian. Tertullian was one of the early church fathers, and all of them, check one of them, they never said this, uh, yeah, Jesus Christ was inferior only in terms of his humanity, humanity as Monday we try to prove without any evidence. They all believed that Jesus made that statement in absolute sense. Now, Tertullian said this. He said we should not suppose, <coughs> in, his, in his writings against um, Hermogenes, he said we should not suppose that there's any other being than God, who alone is unbegotten and uncreated. Who can, how can it be that anything except the Father should be older and on this account indeed nobler than the Son of God, the only begotten and first begotten word, that God, which did not require a maker to give it existence, will be much more elevated in rank than the Son, which had an author to bring it into being. So Tertullian is recognizing that this Father was the author that brought the Son into being. He said the Father is the entire substance, but the Son is a derivation and portion of the whole, as he himself acknowledged, for my Father is greater than I. You see, Tertullian wasn't saying humanity here. He acknowledged this as an absolute statement. Thus, the Father is distinct from the Son, being greater than the Son, inasmuch as he who begets is one, and he who who, who, who is begotten is another. He too who sends is one, and he who he who is sent is another. He again who makes his one and he through the thing is made is another. So, brethren, I'm sure um, I've been able to show very clearly from both explicit verses and implicit verses that there's no one co-equal with the Father. Jesus Christ said, my Father is greater than I. Paul, uh, uh, he also said, the Son who gave them to me, uh, the Father who gave them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them from my hand. Paul also said, we have one God and Father and uh, one God and Father who is above all, who is greater than all and above all. So these are explicit verses I've used to establish that case. And if we stay true to this word and preach the simplicity of the gospel, there will not be any confusion. It will not bring confusion between the Muslims. It will not bring confusion between us. It will be simple. Everybody went around teaching that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that his Father was our true God and Father. The only one and only true God is the Father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless Thank you. Right on time. Okay. Thank you for presenting your your side, and I hope the um, the audience is following along. And please please take notes and um, write your questions down in the comment section. And please tag my name, tag me so that I can see them as soon as they come in, and so I can gather them and get them ready for the Q and A session. That being said. Uh, we'll have Brother Monday give his open statement. Uh, Brother Monday, whenever you're ready, please begin. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let me start by saying a wonderful good evening to everybody out there listening to this. 
Um, if you ask me, I don't want to say this as a debate. I rather like to say it as a time to bring light to dark areas as far as the gospel of Christ is concerned. I won't waste time on this uh, because uh, the scripture is very clear as per who Jesus is. Again, let me say I won't waste time on this because the scripture is very clear as per who Jesus is. First thing first, going by the definition given by OJ, you would agree with me that Jesus is absolutely absolutely equal with the Father. Why is Jesus equal with the Father? Very simple. First and first, did Jesus ever exist before creation started? Did Jesus ever exist before time? For one to be equal with the Father, you have got to be in existence before time. For it is only the Father that existed before time. So the question now is, did Jesus exist before time? If the answer is a big yes, there's no need for 2 hours 50 minutes. Jesus existed before time. Jesus existed before creation. In fact, the scripture says that Jesus created all things. Things in heaven. Things in heaven. Things in heaven. Things in heaven. Now, I keep stressing this because somehow it hurts my heart to see a supposed believer teaching that Jesus is not who Jesus truly is. If Jesus existed before time, this meeting should just close. Because it simply means that Jesus is certainly equal to the Father. Notice that Jesus carried out creation. Colossians 2 tells us that by him all things were created. And without him there was nothing made that was made. The scripture says that Jesus created things in heaven. The problem most of us have is we are looking at the born Jesus as against the Jesus who is God, who was, who is, and who will always remain God. So the moment we look at Jesus in the eye of the flesh, we simply conclude that Jesus is not equal to the Father. The point again is, did my Lord and Savior exist before time? The scripture says Jesus was in existence before creation started. One more thing to note to show that Jesus is equal to God. No creation took place outside the spoken word. No creation took place outside the spoken word. The Father, God, the Spirit came together in oneness because it is all it is one God, one God in three persons, one God, three three persons, one God, three persons, one God, three manifestations of the same God, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Notice Genesis 1, the scripture says, and God, not and God's. Now, not, not this, and God said, and God, one, and God said, let us, and God said, let us make man, let us, he started with one, and God said, let us, Genesis 1, 2, 7, says, and God made man, again, let us, and God said, let us, us, let us. He didn't say, and God said, I make man. No. He says, and God said, and God said, meaning there is one God, but in three persons. God manifesting in three persons. And God said, I, now I can shout this for God knows how long. And God said, let us. Hello. 
Now, now, if God said, let us, how can God carry out creation with somebody that is not co-equal with him? Can there be creation in partnership with God if one is not equal with the Father? Why didn't God use the angels to carry out creation? Why did God have to use himself? Why did God say, let us make man in our own image? What? So if Jesus is not equal with the Father, how come he carried out creation? And I'm sure we all know that Jesus is our creator. And that's why it pains me to see a brother, should I say a supposed brother in the faith, at this level of life, not knowing the true person of Jesus. A creator can never be anything less than God. And so if Jesus is the creator, or if Jesus was the creator, it makes him equal with the Father. The problem with most of us, I repeat, I cease to call, call names now. The problem with most of us is, we look at the born Jesus forgetting the pre-incarnate Jesus, forgetting that Jesus took up the form in which he came to earth. We are blind. We can't see that this Jesus did not start as a servant. We are blind. We, we can't see that this Jesus did not start as a man. We are blind. We read in the scriptures, Philippians 2, 8 to 10, Jesus emptied himself of his glory and took upon himself the form. He took upon himself the form of a man. In fact, scripture says he came in the form of a servant. Okay, scripture says in Hebrews 1, the scripture says that God made him a little lower than the angels. That means he was much greater than the angels. A person in heaven greater than the angels, if it's not equal to God, then who is that person equal to? <clears throat> or who is that person equal with? If Jesus is not equal with the Father, who is Jesus equal with? Is it the angels in, in heaven? Is it Satan? Is it man? Who was Jesus be before he came to earth? A God? A man? Or an angel? Can somebody help, help me fill up this gap? Who was Jesus before he came to earth? Was he God? Was he man? Was he an angel? Or was he just some kind of a spirit? Greater or lesser than an angel? If Jesus is not equal with the Father, I can tell you the simple gospel truth that nobody else can be ascribed as God. For the Jesus we see is the God in his invisible form. So Jesus is the visible expression of the invisible God. Now if Jesus is the visible expression of the invisible God, how then is Jesus not equal with the Father? How can a person that is not equal to the Father be the visible, the exact visible image and expression of the Father. If Jesus is not God, I can tell you without fear or favor, there is no other God. If Jesus is not equal with the Father, nobody exists as God. Nobody, nobody exists as God. The moment we get to understand that Jesus existed before time, then we will get to see that Jesus is certainly equal with the Father. A time came, Jesus prayed. He said, Father, glorify me with thyself, with the glory I had with you before the world started. Before the world started. Before creation took place. The glory I had with you the glory I had, I had with you. So if Jesus had the same glory, had not share, 
have the same glory, not just share. This is beyond share. It covers share and goes beyond share that I had with you before the world started. Then how then will anybody, anybody say that Jesus is not equal and more the Father? And Hello, is that? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, you have 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes. Good. In Genesis and, and, and the Exodus, we read the accounts of the Israelites as they escaped from the hand of Pharaoh. All through the scriptures in Exodus, you will not hear the word Jesus there. What you will hear is the Lord God. What you will hear is God. What you will hear is Jehovah. That's what you will hear. The apostles came up and told us by revelation truths or revelational truths deep inside from the Spirit of God that it was Jesus. It was Jesus. Listen right this. It was Jesus that took the, the Israelites out of Egypt. The scripture says it was Jesus. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, 1 Corinthians 10. You will see that the scripture says that the rock that supplied water for the Israelites was Jesus. The rock that followed the Israelites was Jesus. And when you read that in the Old Testament, it tells you that that rock was Jehovah. That that rock was the Lord God. That that rock was the Almighty God. First Corinthians 10 tells us that that rock that followed them was Jesus. So if the rock that followed them was Jesus, does that not tell us that Jesus is equal with the Father? As a matter of fact, there is more expression of Jesus in the scriptures than the Father because Jesus is the only way to the Father. How do you miss the way to get to your destination? If Jesus leads us to the Father, it means he's equal with the Father. If you cannot get to the Father without G Jesus Christ, it simply means one, one thing, that Jesus is equal with the Father. As a matter of fact, no man is saved outside Christ. And the scripture says that salvation belongs to God. So if you cannot find salvation outside Jesus, it means that Jesus is God. Therefore, whatever the contest is, Jesus is equal with the Father. You can be saved outside God. Can I also add this? Every time in the scriptures, the word the Father is used. Check that same verse. Check the verse before or check the verse after. You will see Jesus talked about there. Every single verse you find in the scriptures where the Father is mentioned, you will not finish two, three verses without getting to see that Jesus is talked about there. Why? Jesus is equal with the Father. The scriptures that where Christ said, and my Father is greater than I, a very simple and explicit scripture. In that same chapter where Jesus said, and my Father is greater than I, few verses up there, Jesus revealed that he was equal with the Father, Showing that he was God. And then went on to explain that he came as a man. And that was why he said, and the Father is greater than I. Any doubt about this? Jesus said, if you see the Father, you have seen me. In fact, Philip had to ask him, show us the Father. If you read that verse very well, Jesus was some kind of angry with Philip. He said, why accept me? Why ask me to show you the Father? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. What contest would, would that be except to show that this Jesus is equal with the Father? Whether we like it or not, Jesus has two natures. We may argue from that in next year. It is very clear. Isaiah 9 6, the, the, the scripture says that for unto us a child is born. And then it says, A son 
is given. Notice that a son is five, not born. Five more minutes. All right. Notice that instead of I say that unto us a child is given. Sorry, a child is born. And unto us a son is given. He shall be called the mighty God. <clears throat> I don't understand. If Jesus is not equal with the Father, how do we call him the mighty God? It went on to say he shall be called the everlasting Father. If Jesus is not equal with the Father, why does the scripture say he is equal with the Father? And why does it, sorry, say that he is the everlasting Father? Why did that verse, in that one verse, it shows the true nature of Jesus. One, a child is to be born. That child will be called the mighty God. Is there any verse in the scripture where a human being, a completely human being, a complete human being without being God, called the mighty God? Is there any scripture, anybody out there can show me, where a person, even the greatest prophet of all time, is called the mighty God? If we don't know that Jesus has two natures, we live in blatant ignorance. Painful one for that matter. A son is given. A child is born. That same child will be called the mighty God. That is completely a state of equality with the Father. More so, no human being is ever going to be called the everlasting Father. If Jesus is called the everlasting Father, it simply means he's equal with the Father. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You finished with three minutes to spare. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Thank you for these opening statements. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to go straight away into the first rebuttal. And this is uh, each person will have 10 minutes to address the other person's opening statement. For those of please go ahead. You have 10 minutes and you can start now. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Monday, for that uh, presentation. Uh, but um, brethren and the readers and the listeners, you agree with me that when I when we, I started this presentation, I went straight to show very explicit text, you know, um, uh, to, to make my case and my point. I didn't go to, oh, if Jesus was existing, he has to be this, if it was the call, the whatever. He, Monday, you see, what I can't really just understand, and it, it so pains my spirit. I have anguish in my soul that I can't understand how he would say that he's pained that I'm taking the, the position that Jesus took. In the very words of Jesus, he said, my father is greater than I am. Monday doesn't believe Jesus Christ. He doubts Jesus Christ. He's, cry he's trying to make Jesus Christ say what, he's not, what <coughs> Jesus Christ did not mean. And how can he be pained that I am the one support saying what Jesus said? My father is greater than I. I am the one saying that <coughs> Jesus said his father is greater than all and his father is greater than him. Monday has not been able to show us a single verse of scriptures that show his case. Not one from a doctrinal perspective. What we've been seeing here is if this is this, that is this. How can this be this if that is not this? How can this be this? We can all go into speculations and personal revelations and conjecture. But at the end of the day, what has been explicitly stated as a doctrinal matter must trump whatever imaginations or fairy tales we have. Whatever convictions we have that are so strong. It doesn't matter. Nothing. So we haven't seen any, any scriptural text. I showed that Jesus said the Father is greater than I am. I showed that Jesus said the Father is greater than all. I showed that Paul said the, 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 we have one God and Father who is above all. Three texts. I went to implicit verses showing that Jesus Christ could not be co-equal with the Father because he is not self-existent. Because he said, what? As the living Father has sent me, and as I live because of the Father, even so, he that eateth me shall live because of me. So, Jesus Christ's life is dependent on that of, of the Father. Monday is not addressing any of those things. How can Jesus Christ be co-equal with the one who granted him to have life in himself? These are some simple, basic, commonsensical things we need to think about. How can Jesus be co-equal with the one who he lives by? He said it, I live by the Father in the same way you live by me. 
So our sustenance is based on Christ. The same way the sustenance is based on his sustenance is based on the Father. So how can he be co-equal with the one he lives by? Simple. These are just simple things. So I did not only establish my case from very explicit verses of scriptures. I also established them from implicit. He has not shown us one verse of scripture that shows that just is co-equal with the Father. All he's done is based on association. Now he goes on to say, um, just Christ is equal with the Father because he existed before the Father. Now I see there's a very big problem here because where you see. The concept of Monday's understanding of who Jesus was before the word was made flesh is what is, is, has led to a lot of the submissions he's doing. He sees Jesus Christ as an eternal person, like the Trinitarians. In fact, he's even confirmed his Trinitarian view today. He said one God in three persons. He sees Jesus as an eternal person that was with the Father creating human being. That's why he's still going back to quote, let, let's, let us make man. But I showed from clear text that the word, we are the saints of God. Yes, he quoted the part where Jesus Christ, the, the Father created the world by Jesus Christ. And that is true, I understand that because the Father spoke the word. If you go to Genesis, it's right there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the, the Spirit of God moved over the, <coughs> the, 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 the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. So, everything is quoted. I think the problem is that Monday doesn't make a distinction between an attribute of God. Something that was intrinsically in God. As the word of God and God himself. So he's, th he's got, of course, we've dealt with let us make man. That's a very woeful verse for anybody to want to use. But I, I don't think I want to go back to that again. Because like if the president and his vice president and the secretary of state say, oh, let's bake a pie. Then you're going to now conclude that there are three persons in the president. No, one person can still say let us. It's, it, it's still that one person that shares that position of presidency. Likewise, you don't say because God said let us. There were three people creating with him. No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, there's no evidence of that. And we know that because it even reverts to the singular form after that. He said, and God created man in his own image and likeness. Now, we know that God cannot be three persons because in his clear explanation to the, to the Samaritan woman, he defined what God is and who God is. Very clearly, he told the woman, you worship, you do not know what, but we know what we worship. Even Jesus was part of those worshiping. He said what? God is spirit. He didn't say God is three persons. He didn't say God is a divine nature. Like Monday, we say God is a divine. No, he said God is spirit. And they that worship him, single person, must worship him in spirit and truth. Then he goes on to qualify for such does the father seek to, to worship him. So Jesus made it very clear who God is. There is no doubt about it. His spirit, he's one person, he's the father. The Shuma says the same thing. Shuma Israel, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Ichad. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Describe, confirm the same thing. Yes, it is true, we have one God and there's nobody but him. Paul confirmed the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. We have only one God and he's the father. These are very explicit declarations. We see Jesus also praying... Uh it's five more minutes. In John 17, 3, he says, This is done alive, that they might know you, the only through God, and to know Jesus Christ whom you have sent. These are explicit verses. Why is Jesus Christ not saying this is eternal life that they may know you, the Holy Spirit, alongside me, you sent as the only true God? Why is why do you never see the one God expressed as this compound unity like Trinitarians and Monday want to argue? You will never see any place that they, they, they mention the word God and to refer to three persons. Not a single place. The only time you get that is from the conjecture of Trinitarians. They imagine that in their minds. But when you come to explicit doctrines, explicit statements, you never see anything like that. He said so many things. He, he said, um, just Christ created all things. Yes, he did. And like you heard Tertullian, I read Tertullian. Tertullian was not saying, this was, and all the early church fathers, they preached the same thing. Yes, they did recognize Jesus Christ as God in some sense, in the same way I've just explained, but every single one of them said the Father was greater. So how can Moni be now accusing me and saying he's pained that I'm saying that the Father is greater than the Son? How can he be saying that? And, he's, and he says he's a believer. He should be the one saying that he doesn't believe Christ. Jesus Christ made no context when he said that. He did not say my Father is greater than my humanity, but my divinity is co-equal with him. No, he said my Father is greater than I. I means I. I is the sum total of everything a person is. If I say, to, for example, Russell, I am coming to see you tomorrow. It would be very silly and absorber anyone to say, oh, you see, what OJ meant when he said he was coming to see Russell was that it was his body that was coming to see Russell, not his spirit. Nobody's going to make that argument. When Jesus said, my father is greater than I, there was no aspect of the son's being or person that was excluded from that personal pronoun I. But Monday doesn't want to accept that because he has em embraced a false doctrine of the Trinity and a component, component of it that has caused a lot of problems and division in the church. He doesn't want to go with what Jesus said. I am the one reiterating what Jesus Christ said. He also said so many things. He said, um, and he's making a lot of arguments by association. The Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 6, by the way, Isaiah 9, 6, that, that, even Trinitarians know that that translation should actually be father of eternity. 
But even if anyway, if, and this is a fact, go and do your research. Out of the child is born, mighty God, Father of eternity. That is the correct translation. Even Trinitarians will tell you that, that that is the correct translation, not eternal Father. But even if we say eternal Father, I still understand that because the same way I understand that Jesus is God is the same way I understand that he's the Father in a representative sense. Yes, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, not because Jesus Christ is the Father himself, but because he's the express image, he was, he's the one who reveals the Father. Jesus Christ cannot be the Father himself because he said what? The living Father that is in me does the work. He said what? If I testify of myself, my witness is not true. But there's one that testifies of me, showing the principle of agency. So there's another person testifying of him. So Jesus Christ cannot be the Father. And him, the Father is also testifying of the same person. You cannot use that to testify. He said other things. He said... Um, that if uh, one is not co-equal with God, how can he be? How can he be creating? Because Sunday, Monday sees Jesus Christ as a person with God creating. When you see Jesus Christ as the Word creating, that will not be a problem. He also went on to say, uh, um, he said so many things, uh, many other things. He says, um, Jesus Christ has two natures. Please, I would like Monday to show us from the scriptures where he got that idea from. He needs to prove it. Because you see, I can tell you, in fact, I have a doctrine now that everybody should believe. There are four persons in the, in the, in the Godhead. There are four. There are four. There is, and of course, I'm being silly. I want to show you the kind of argument Monday is making. So there are four persons. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Melchizedek. Melchizedek is the fourth person and the silent member of the quadrinity. In fact, that's my new doctrine now. It's a quadrinity. Because the Bible describes Melchizedek as having no beginning of days, having no end. So he has to be God. He's a fourth person, but he's a silent member of the, of the quadrinity. So you cannot say it's Jesus Christ. It's not because the Bible says he resembles the Son of God. He lives forever. So we, cannot, we can conclude now that there's a quadrinity. Now let me tell you something. If I come up with that kind of argument, how can you begin to reason with, that, with, with me? Because I'm building things from conjecture. I am not going and I'm not addressing the explicit text of scriptures. So I said in this debate, we need to address this issue based on the facts, not based on our own personal uh, isogesis. Uh, how many minutes, uh, Russell? One minute. One I, minute. I have one more minute. But you see, in any case, you see, Monday has not addressed any scriptural text. He hasn't. He hasn't addressed any of the things I said. He said, Jesus said, uh, when he said he was, we, we talked about the dual nature. Monday needs to prove to us. You see, it's a, it's a concept that they had to fabricate to make the doc that doctrine of Trinity completely not, not falsifiable. You can't have a, a wine that is 100% alcohol and 100% non-alcohol at the same time. It, does, it makes no sense. Whether you say it's a mystery or not, that's what you, Jesus Christ as one person is either 100% God or 100% man or part God. Part, you can't have him 100% God and 100% man at the same time. It doesn't exist. So, Monday, please, you need to address the text, the explicit text I brought out. You haven't addressed them. You've only been uh, preaching from your own conjecture and imagination. So, please Please address them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, Brother Monday, um, it should be your turn now to share your rebuttal. You can begin when you're ready. Now, see, the truth is anybody can deny the truth to suit his or her own views. OJ, I don't want to say just like. How would you say that I didn't use any scriptural text? Of all I have been saying so far, did I not quote some verses? What I will do next is to show scripture by, by scripture. Just that we don't have, have enough time here. And OJ is saying I did not address what he said. I thought this debate has a plan, an agenda spelled out. My opening address does not have, have to address what what he has said. Then also, do sir. Hello. I'm here. I can hear you. I am saying my opening speech or address yeah. was it supposed to address what he he said? Your opening statement was to share your your understanding. It doesn't have so, to. So good. So why was he saying that I have not addressed what he said? Well, he can he can bring that up as a rebuttal, but all things being equal, that's that's fair. Very good. Now, I like to read from the scriptures, John five nineteen. It says, "Then answered Jesus and said to them, Very verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. They say by himself, of himself." But what he seeth the Father do, what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever the Father doeth, 
this also doeth the son. Likewise, I'll read that place again. OJ said, equality has to do it with ability. And I want to show him that every ability the father has, Jesus also has. I'll read that verse again. John 5, 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself. Then say by himself. For, but what he seeth the father do, for what he seeth the father do, for what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the son likewise. For whatsoever the father doeth, this doeth also the son likewise. I have said there was no need for this meeting to take two hours, 50 minutes. It takes the Holy Spirit in the heart of a believer to understand the true person of Christ. Whatsoever, OJ said that equality deals with our ability. John 5 19 clearly tells us Jesus talking, not the apostles, not me, not anybody. Now, whatsoever the Father doeth, the Son doeth likewise, not somehow, likewise. If this is not equality, I wonder what else we get said to be equality. Meaning that every ability the Father has, Jesus has. Again, when Jesus said, the Father is better than I, I repeat, we may have you from nothing next, next year. The scripture is a two-edged sword. The scripture is like a coin. It has a head and it has a tail. That a part is the head and the other part is the tail does not mean that the head is greater than the tail. It does not mean that the tail is lesser than the head. Without the tail of a coin, you wouldn't have, have a coin. The same way Jesus said, there is no me without the Father. And there is no Father without me. What does that mean? It means equality. Jesus is equal with the Father. So the moment Christ said, the Father is better than I, it simply means his humanity because Jesus came in the form of a man. And to show us humility, he told us that the Father is greater than I. Few verses before that verse, I keep saying this, and OJ wants to deny this truth. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Isaiah 9.6, which OJ has tried to deny a child is born, a son is given. He shall be called the mighty God. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. And he shall be called the everlasting father. If this is not equality, I wonder what 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 to Jay is saying. The father is greater than I refers to the humanity of Christ. Nothing else. Nothing else. If if it is not, how come Jesus will not say, if you have seen me? You have seen the Father. John 1 verse 1. And the Word was God. And the Word was God. And the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. In the beginning, I like to scream this again. In the beginning, the Word was in the beginning, the word was, the word was, the word was. The word was with God, and the word was God. Now, can Oje tell me if the word of God is not God? Is the word, word of God man? Is the word of God what? If Jesus, being the word of God, was with God, and the scripture says that the word of God was God, what again are we talking about here? It takes the understanding from the Holy Spirit. The problem OJ has is he is not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes. No wonder he sees the Holy Spirit as some kind of an it. 
Therefore, the Spirit of God will not give you understanding of who Christ is. These things are written everywhere in the scriptures. He talked about Christ saying that the Father testified of him. What OJ does, does not see it there is the fact that the Father testifies of Jesus means that Jesus is certainly equal with the Father. How could God testify about a person is not equal with it? Somebody has got God to think some, some more here. God, the Father, testifying about Jesus. How come the angels did not testify about him? How come it had to be the Father to testify of Christ? The Father testifying of Christ can only speak of one thing. Because Jesus came out of the Father. What came out of the Father can be less than the Father. If Jesus came out of the Father, it means he's, he's equal with the Father. If, if the Father testified of the Son, Jesus Christ, it simply means that Jesus is equal with the Father. Because the Father will not testify of anybody else. He will only testify of Jesus. And that means by implication, two more he testifying about himself. Hello? Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Good. So if the Father testified of Jesus, it simply means that Jesus is equal with the Father. We don't have enough time to look at verse, verse, verse by verse stuff, stuff here. So let, let me stop it now, for now, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so Brother Oje, your time starts now. You have... Uh, you have your uh, rebuttal, your, your second rebuttal, five minutes. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, I, don't, I, I think we'll just be uh, going around in circles, basically, because we have a situation here where uh, we have two kinds of uh, people debating here. One is trying to use his personal revelation and conjecture and is trying to impose it on this. Now, when I said Monday is not addressing the text, yes, I know he's not supposed to rebut that, but I'm saying that he's not bringing explicit verses. I'm not just saying that you should, I'm not just saying you're not referring to scriptures. I'm saying I am building my argument on what has been explicitly stated. That's, that's what Monday is, he fails to grasp. He's not understanding what I'm saying. I am building my position on what has been explicitly stated. I'm not saying you Monday's is, 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 is his argument is if this is this, then that has to be this. If this is this, that is conjecture. It's his own personal revelations. It's it, we, we are not going to accept that. He's saying that God, Jesus Christ said, my father is greater than I. He was talking to his humanity. Monday needs to show, prove that. He said whether we like it or not. Then, I, then Monday should also accept my doctrine that God is a quadrinity. Why would you not accept that? Monday, do you, you know, do you accept? So if somebody jumps up today and tells you that Melchizedek, based on the description, he has no father, no mother. He has to be before eternity. He has to be God. Who else is building, building doctrines and positions from isogetical statements? You are making, you are being, you're doing isogesis. You're not exegeting the text. I am the one showing you, I've showed clear scriptures. He's now, he's not in the rebuttal. He's not addressed now. He had his rebuttal. He didn't address any of those verses. The father who gave them to me is greater than all. Paul said we have one God, the father who is above all. Jesus said my father is greater than I am. Three clear explicit texts. He hasn't shown one. So when I said he's not quoting texts, let me make it clear. I am not saying that he's not vehemently and zealously making reference to uh, texts that reflect his own conjecture and his own misrepresentation. I am saying he's not quoting explicit doctrinal texts. That is the point I've been trying to let him see. He's not, he's not seeing that. All right? Going to Isaiah 9.6. I've said that, that thing clearly. He said I'm trying to... You see, it's unfortunate that... You see, when somebody is very passionate about an argument but you don't study... You... you, are, you, you, you and this is not something that I came up with. I said, go and do your research. Even Trinitarians will not... They will refute you Monday. Go and look at uh, Dr. Brown. He will disagree with you. He will tell you that that text should actually read Father of Eternity. These are Trinitarians, I'm telling you. So I'm not telling you what, I, but you don't want to believe them. You don't want to believe them. And, I'm, and I even said that even if, we, even if we say that it was Eternal Father, I still understand that. Anyhow, it, it will still not deface my position because Jesus Christ is the expression of the Father. He is. Notice that Jesus Christ did not say, um, um, uh, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Don't you know that I am the Father and the Father is me? He said, don't you know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Then listen what, to what he said. How else can you say show up the Father? If you don't believe them, believe for the works that I do. Believe for the works. 
believe that what the father is in me the father who is in me is doing these works but Monday doesn't want to see a distinction between the Father. What does the Bible say? In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Go and read the translation. He said, God fully dwells in Jesus. Jesus said, the Father living in me. He said, I, I'm not, these things I'm doing, I'm not the one doing it. But the Father living in me do, does the work. But he doesn't see that distinction. He said so many things. He said the Spirit itself. He said, he said that's why I see the Spirit as a heat, as a heat. Now let's go to Romans 8, 16. The other day I put out the corruption about uh, uh, translations and they wanted to eat me raw. Monday... One of your most revered translations, the King James, which you were trying to attack me for, says this in Romans 8.16. The spirit itself bears witness that are, with our spirit that we, we are children of God. I thought you loved the King James Version. That's the King James Version telling you the spirit itself. Explain it. Do you, do you agree with it? You said, you said ah, I don't have the Holy Spirit because I refer to the Holy Spirit as an it. Look at your, one of the Bibles you, you like. Look at it. The spirit itself. How do you explain that? So deal with it, my brother. Deal with it. You know, he said so many things. He said... Um, but the bottom line is that all how many minutes do I have, uh, Russell? One more minute. All the things he's built his argument on have been based on implicit, if it's this, if it's that. I built my position on both explicit and explicit, implicit statements. Jesus Christ said, As I live by the Father. Mondays, he needs to address that in the in rebuttal. Monday said, The same way you live by me, I live by the Father. How can the sustain how can you explain that? And don't say that it is the flesh speaking. Because we do not eat the flesh of Jesus. said, he that eats me shall live by me. The same way, exactly the same way I live by the Father. How can you be co-equal with the one who your life is dependent on? It makes no sense. But Monday will not practically address these things. Both explicit and implicit statement. So he needs to be addressing this text. Addre rebut these verses I am bringing. Don't, don't keep repeating your revelation, your conjecture with zeal. Rebut them. Address the text. That is what you should be doing Monday. You know, so let me leave it at that, and I hopefully in the next five minutes you should be able to to do that. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So right now we'll just take a two-minute intermission, just two-minute intermission, and when we come back, we will go into the cross examinations. Thank you. Two minutes. Okay. All right. So we're back. Thanks for everyone that is watching. Once again, <clears throat> we're having a, a debate uh, between Brother OJ and Brother Monday. Topic is, is the Son of God co-equal with the Father? Brother OJ is arguing against, and Brother Monday is arguing for. So right now we're going to cross-examinations. Um, Brother Monday has 10 minutes to cross-examine Brother OJ. Uh, it is it not the other way around? Sorry. You know, he insisted that... Right. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> so, Brother OJ, to cross-examine um, Brother Monday. And the way this works is very simple. You basically have 10 minutes to ask as many questions as you like. If the, if the um, person you're asking questions to refuses to answer, um, you may choose to skip or you may choose to keep on, but you only have 10 minutes. Um, to to cross-examine. And I would encourage the person who is being asked the question to respond as well as possible so that the person asking questions can get as much from it as possible. So right now, Brother OJ, please, you have 10 minutes to cross-examine uh, Brother Monday on his arguments. You, can, you may begin. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Russell. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to ask you a question. Uh, the, you may not be seeing the screen up there, but I'm quoting from John... Uh, chapter 17 verse 3 my first question to monday is this jesus christ said this very clearly when he prayed to the father he said eternal life is to know you the only true god and to know jesus christ the one you've sent now my question to you is that in that statement where he said eternal life is to know you the only true god how many persons did he recognize as the only true god in that categorization of only true god how many persons did he refer to as only true god in this st statement Hello. Hello. Monday in. Yeah, can we yeah, yeah. quick? Yeah. How many persons? Yeah. The question is. So the questions are towards you. He's going to be asking you <clears throat> a series of questions, and um, and it's okay. to you to answer them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so how many persons in John seventeen three here says eternal life is to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ. So the first question I want to ask you is that how many persons here did Jesus Christ? Place in that category of only true God based on this statement. 
The father. So, so the father. Yes. So okay. So Jesus Christ. So why did Jesus Christ not include himself and the Holy Spirit in this statement when he was declaring who this only true God was? Why? Why did did what? Why did Jesus Christ not include himself and the Holy Spirit yeah. in this statement? Mm. Because he said okay. this to the hearing of all. In this context, when okay. he said, why did he not say like, this is eternal life, that they may know you, I whom you have sent, alongside the Holy Spirit, as the only true God. Why did he only mention the Father alone as the only true God? And he distinguished himself as, and to know Jesus Christ, the one you've sent, separate. Why did he put the Father in that category of only true God? Simple. To show the one that sent him, that, that was number one. Two, to show that without he himself, you can't be saved. No, but okay, fine, mm. fine. I got your answer, but that is funny because you, your claim is that Jesus Christ is hundred percent God at the same time. So regardless of that, if he's a part yeah. of that Godhead and he's hundred yeah. percent God at the same time, why yeah. is he not including his divine side as that part of the only true God? At different points in time, Jesus speaks of himself as a man. At some point, he speaks of himself as God. All right. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Can, can you show me one? Ex uh, just give me an example of an explicit verse where Jesus Christ declared, he claimed that he was God, as the Father has that's... claimed. Can you show me just one? Just you can. You don't have to look at it. Just quote it offhand. Revelation one eight and eighteen. Okay. Revelation one eight. Um, let me yes. ask you a question. We've gone through this before. So in Revelation one mm. eight, the Bible talks about mm. the one who sits upon the throne. And the one, the lamb who went to take the book out of the hand of the it Lord. doesn't say, say that. Hello, please. One eight did not say, say that, please. I, I, no, 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 I'm asking you a different question. Hold on, hold on. Revelations one. One eight okay. did not wait, talk about sitting on, on the throne. Wait, 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 I'm talking about Revelations. Okay. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. The book okay. of Revelations speak about the one who is sitting on the throne. Can you identify mm -hmm. who that person is? The question is not about who's uh, no, I'm asking you. Phone. No, no, no. See, no, I'm see, uh, I, I'm the one sorry, questioning one you. Sorry, one second. Pause. Um, so this round, this time, Brelje is one who has the let's call it the microphone, right? So he can ask any question and he can choose to skip the question if he feels it's not being yeah. asked. So if your answer, if your response is Revelation 1 8, um, Brelje has the prerogative to either read Revelation 1 8 or or skip it, and then when you when you get your turn, you can come back and now, um, you know, narrow down on Revelations one day. I just want to make that clear. Okay, please continue. Yeah. So yeah. So um, and Monday in the book of Revelations, the Bible speaks about one who was sat on the throne, and one the Lamb who went to take the book out of the right hand of the one that sat on the throne. Who was the one that sat on the throne? The Father. Okay. Sits on the throne. That's fine. So who was the one? The Lamb. Jesus himself. Jesus himself. Jesus himself sits on that same throne. <laughs> wait, wait. Monday, the book of Revelation yes. clearly tells us that there was a lamb yes. who went to yes. take the book out of the right hand of the one that sat on the throne. Who yes. is the lamb in this in that in that in, in Revelation? Who is referred to as the lamb? Jesus okay. is the lamb. So and who... he sits on that same throne. <laughs> so he went to take so who did was the one he went to take the book out of his hand on the throne? Hello? The Bible says the, the Bible says the lamb went to take the book out of the right hand of the one that sat on the throne. So if yeah. you, if you, if Jesus is the lamb, who was that person he took the book out of his hand that was on the throne? Let me explain that scripture to you because it is clear you, you don't understand what that really means. That scripture is talk, talking about beef, beef, before time. No, no, that's before not my question. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, I don't have limited time. I'm not talking about before time. I'm just asking to identify the characters. Who was the person who was, who did, he went to take the book out of the right hand of the world? I have already told you the father. I've told you this. Good. Father. Now, Revelation 1 8 tells us the greetings yes. Yes. that it's, the greetings yes. were from the seven spirits that come from the throne. The greetings came that's from the one who. He, that's a lie. That's a lie, please. Can we go to Revelation uh, chapter 1? Chap no, chap one Re eight. Not 1 8, sorry, chapter, Revelation chapter you, 1. You said 1 8. That was you said one I'm, eight. I'm clarifying my error. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. The point is that in Revelation chapter 1, it clearly tells us who the one sitting on the throne was. It says, uh, Revelation 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Then it goes on to say, uh, in from verse uh, chapter uh, verse four, John to the seven churches, grace be unto you, peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which 
are before his throne. So we know clearly mm. that the person who is the one referring to us is who was and who is to come is the father sitting on the throne because the seven spirits are from the throne. Very clearly. Therefore, it explains the one who said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the one who is, who was and who is to come, the Lord God Almighty. That's the father, not the son. Sorry. Anyway, let me go on. It, let me ask you a question. How many, before Jesus Christ came to the earth, was he the same person as the father or was he a distinct person from the father? He was a distinct person from All right. the father. So, so the God that was manifest in the in, in flesh was not the father yes. then. It was, it was someone else. It was a different person. You said what? So the God that was manifest in the flesh was not the father now. It was a different person. It was God. You see, that's not my question. You have listen. Don't what? ask me the issue I have. I'm asking you questions. You've said that Jesus was a distinct person from the Father. So this so, Jesus, so the and was God. So the God yeah. now that now came to be manifest in the flesh now was not the Father. He was a distinct person. Jesus is God as much as the Father himself is that God. That was not my question. Um, the question is the person who came, the God that you yeah. said came to be manifest in the flesh was not yeah. the Father. It was the Son. It was the Son, yes. So you have two gods right there. We don't have two Why gods, not? one God. How is that? Wait, 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 wait. You've just said, you see, you see, this is the thing. And that is the confusion you bring to the table. And it's becoming evident. You've just said that Jesus existed as a distinct person from the Father. And he's also God. Yes, yes, so the yes. God that came, <laughs> all right, was not the Father. Yes. So if the God that was manifest in the flesh was not the Father, you have two gods right there. Because we have only one God, the Bible says, and it's the Father. How do you reconcile that? So you have two gods right there. You are the one saying we, we have two gods. If, if you understand that it is one God manifesting himself in three pers persons, you won't be saying we have two gods. But the Bible says we have but the Bible says we have only one God and he is the Father. It's an explicit statement. So but you're saying And that, the scriptures calls Jesus him, himself the Father. <laughs> you know what? Okay, let me move to another question. Let me ask you how many persons did Jesus worship as his God? You say what? How many persons did Jesus worship as his God? How many persons did Jesus worship as his God? Yes. Do 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 we have like two, three, four, five no, gods? No, see, I'm just asking. See, it's a simple question. Russell, how many? How much time do I have? Oh my there God. is only one God. Russ, the man. That is not my saying. question. Monday. You see, this is the same thing Corridor was doing. It's a simple question. How many persons did Jesus worship as his God? One, two, three. It's a simple question. As a man on earth, he worshipped the Father in heaven. Okay, so and how many? Wait, 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 wait. This is the, so good. Yes. So, how many persons did Jesus worship as his God? Is it one person or three and persons? And I you, the man Jesus worshipped the Father, <laughs> and the Father is, is the God. So I understand that he worshipped the Father. So, but how good. many persons did he worship? Is it one person? Did I say what? I said the Father. Okay, so, so, so the Father, father. Is, so the Father is one person, the right? Is one person, yes. Okay, good. So, but how many persons do you worship as your God? One person. Oh, and who is that person? Jesus but Christ. You, but you said Jesus is a distinct person from the Father. You see the confusion. That here? is because that is be, because oh, you, you are here to know that Christ is the manifestation of the Father in visible form. <laughs> but you. Just, See, if Christ is the manifestation of the Father in the, in the visible form, then he will be the same person. Yes. But you're saying distinctly from eternity, Jesus existed as a yes. distinct person. But now you're not yes. saying he's the Father. In the, you know, it's a, you know, Russell, how much time do I have? Do I still have time? Yeah. Listen, OJ. How much time do I have? Listen. I'm the one, one asking a question. So, oh, okay, go ahead and ask. You know, <laughs> please, can you show us any part of the Bible that teaches that, yes. show us explicit verse that teaches your doctrine that Jesus Christ is 100% God and 100% man? I'm not asking about conjecture. I'm asking about clear biblical text. Isaiah 9.6. No, uh, yeah, Isaiah 9.6. Isaiah 9.6 just says it's the mighty God. And we've cleared that there are different contexts of God. Who, even yeah. Moses was called Elohim. You so, have not cleared anything. No, my question... A child is born. That's a human being. And then we call the mighty God. So one God called a child from the start. And then we call the mighty God. Yeah, it's so called... Jesus is both God and man. The question yes. was to show as a doctrine, as a teaching, not as your inference. A doctrine is a teaching, and a teaching for the church must come from the scriptures. But they are coming from your inference. Isaiah 96. Isaiah 96 doesn't say anything about him being God and man. You're the one. And my question to you is that. It sure. is clear. All you need is simple understanding. For unto us a child, a child, a child is born. That, that, that means humanity, flesh, flesh. A child is born. A child is born. That means a man, a human being. And then that human being will be called the mighty God. 
That is Jesus being God and man. Okay, Russell, you have, can't uh, be my time me. up. My time up. Time is up. Okay, time is up. So All right. now okay. for the Monday, now it's your turn to, to cross-examine. So same exact process. You ask the questions to Brother OJ, and then if you don't like the question, you can either skip or keep asking, if you will. So begin when, you, when, you, when, you're, when you're ready. Okay, I'm on. Now, yes, OJ said that equality has to do with sharing the same ability. And I read from John 5. Where Christ said, whatever the Father doeth, the Son himself doeth likewise. Can OJ tell me if that is not speaking of equality? That is just simply conjecture in itself. That has nothing to do with co-equality. Co the fact that Jesus Christ even has to see the father do something first before he takes the initiative to his following something even clearly shows you that it's not equality. It's like somebody saying, ah, no, I've, it's like someone saying, I don't go my own way. Whatever I see, wherever my, my mentor leads me, I go. Then you now say that is equality. No, we, you see, we, we, no, that, is, that, that doesn't speak about equality. It, it does, and and I, I did not say that it has to do with ability alone. You're, I wanted to correct that. I said you have to look at the overall. I, I gave you the example with those students. It's not just that you can ability. Look at everything about that, the, the, the one being compared with the other being. That's how you know who is co-equal and who is greater. You don't just look at one aspect, not just ability. I didn't say just Listen ability. again. Listen again. Now, OJ can go on to say whatever he likes. That scripture shows clearly that the son is equal with the father. Now, talking about overall, there is no equality based on overall. Nowhere in the world do you talk about that by saying you must be overall. Come on. There is no equality judged on that ground. Equality is judged on a no, no, number of things. Two, equality is relative. Equality is relative. You can't sit down anywhere and have say, that equality is based based on looking at a, a, a factor based on the whole stuff. No, no. A man is equal to his wife. It does not mean that the man is the same thing as the woman. It does not mean that they have the, the same strength. But they are equal for as long as they are humans. So equality is not about looking at the overall thing. That, that, that is the wrong way to look at the word equality. Humans are equal, yet we don't all share the same thing, do we? Well, you're, you're supposed to be asking me questions. You're, you're, you're rebutting. I've I answered don't ask you now. I don't ask you now, do we? Well, we don't because the, the, the comparison between a man and his wife is a completely woeful comparison to, to, to Jesus Christ and, and God because the man doesn't live. The wife doesn't. This wife's life is not dependent on the, on the man. The, 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 it was not the man that granted the wife to have life. But we see clearly here where Jesus was granted to have life in himself. And his life is dependent on the father's life. So it's a complete okay, listen, listen, comparison. Listen, hello, listen here, yeah, listen, listen. There is no scripture that said the, the father granted life to the son. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. Listen, you're you're, you're changing because, what I said. I didn't say you said, I, 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 that's what I said, that he granted the son to listen, have, have life in himself. He granted... Now, listen, 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 listen. Now, now notice two things there. The, as the father, listen right now, as the father has life in himself, mm -hmm. so he has granted the son to have life in himself. Beautiful, two listen, different things. Li listen, listen. As the father has life in himself, in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself. He, he didn't say the father gave life to, to Christ. No, no. I'm responding to your question. Listen, let me go. Okay. I'm responding to your question. You're missing the, the issue. If Jesus Christ was co-equal in the sense you are asking, then what we would have heard Jesus say was that as the Father has life in himself, even so does the Son have life in himself. You don't, you don't even get in the point I'm making. But he the, said, listen, he has granted. The father, well, hold on. The hello, father was granted. Uh, uh, hello. To, 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 when uh, the scripture says that, that the Father... Hello? Yeah, go on, go on. Yes, please continue. When the scripture says that the Father has life in himself, it yeah. means that the Father is the source of life. Okay. And that verse he says that the son has life in himself. That's not what it says. That the, that, yes, you, so. you are evading the crux of the matter that the father granted. That part you the, don't know what to The father granted to show that they are equal. So <laughs> the, the son, 
the son having life in himself more than, 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 than the son himself. Then why did Jesus not say, as the father has life in himself, even so does the son have life in himself? Why yes, did he say, even yes. so has the father granted? To have life in yourself means to be the source of life. But he granted. But the father was the one that granted. He what granted. Did, what did the father did God grant the angels that? Yeah. The father granted that to the angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. It's a, it's a, anyway, it's your man. Time. Go on with your next question because we are going around. Listen, the did clear. the father grant that to <laughs> man? And this if you like. that to anybody else? That is irrelevant. The fact is that the father, if the son, father had not granted the son to have life in himself, will he have life in himself? That is to make the man Jesus to the, be the source of life. The man, As, the man. <laughs> so the man now is the one that is source of life. The, the, you know, anyway. the man Jesus, the man Jesus is the source of life as much as the father is the source of life. That's what that that means. You will always not agree with the explicit verses, no matter how. They, I don't they have to agree with you. you. Okay. Not me. I it's see, clear. Everybody I can see, see it. Yes. As I live by the Father, I live by the Father. Even so, you shall live by me. You will deny these explicit verses. There's no way around it. It's too clear. Anyway, it's your time. So keep asking the question if you have more questions to ask. Hello, the line is breaking. Hello. Yes, Hello? please. Please continue. Please continue. Hello. I can hear you. We can hear you, Monday. We can hear you. Go on. Hello? I can hear you. Okay. When Jesus said that the Father should glorify him with the glory he had with him before the world was created. What does that mean, OJ? All right. I've explained that before and it's very simple. Now... You see, when you read that verse with the mind of a Trinitarian, you already believe that Jesus Christ was with the Father as a person, right? What Jesus Christ was simply saying here is this. This was something that the Father had foreordained for him. And I will show that. Hold on. It was a foreordained glory. When he said, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world was. Jesus was simply saying, that glory which you had kept for me, my glory that you had in your possession, glorify me with it now. How do we know that? How do we know that? Because ask yourself the question. So what? How did how did the Father fulfill that that? How did he fulfill that 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 promise? Did he make Jesus Christ God again? Was he in heaven floating in space? No. The Father fulfilled it because Jesus went on in that same chapter to say, "And the glory which you have given me, I have given to them." That is to show you that it is something the Father reserved for him. Okay. So what glory did, did Jesus give to us? Because he said, "The glory which you have given me." So it shows that it is something that the father did at that point in time something that was reserved for him from the foundation of the world and this glory okay. you are giving me i've given there to is no scripture that says the father reserved any, any glory no i am jesus christ i had glory with you that is what i'm the saying did not, the bible you are not making conjectures okay Okay, you know what? Jesus said the glory I had with you. Yes. Not the glory reserved. Because the, the, the glory the, I the had, had the Father with had you. it. Not the glory reserved. <laughs> That's what, you see, listen to this. The Bible also tells us that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So we are God as well. Let me now go with this kind of dogmatic reasoning. So do you okay, agree? What you just quoted is, is, is making no, no point. He chose us from the start. Does not make no, us no, God. He said no. He said in him. We he were in him. He, we were in him. He chose us in Christ. Before the foundation Mark the of the word. He chose us. Yes. He chose us. Not he made us God. He chose us. He didn't say he made us God. See, listen. Eh? All right. Listen, I've responded to your question. So let me listen. ask you a question. So Jesus, let me finish, Jesus please. said the glory. It's my time. Given... Hello. Sorry. It's my, my, my time, please. Go on, go on, go on. It's still his time. Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 9, 19 says, Baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Christ was speaking here now. Go ye into all the world and make disciples of all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son mm -hmm. and of the Holy Spirit. So, this name, who or what is this name? The ne this name that the father has. First of all, I, okay. That the son, listen, this name that, that the father has, the same name the son has, the same name the Holy Spirit has. What is this name? And what name did the apostles baptize people? What name? 
Okay, first of all, that's an uh, uh, easy question to answer. First of all, I don't even know how that will be relevant in showing that Jesus Christ is co-equal with the Father. But yes, a name is not just oh, the sound, it's also the authority. Going in that authority of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we knew that they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, people even believe that that text may even be a fabricated text. And even if he baptized, even if Jesus was that name, the Bible says he has put his, his name in his son. So there's, I don't have any problem with that. The Savior, the God is the Savior. His Son is the Savior. So even if the, the Son bears the Father's name, I don't have any problem with that. So the issue is that how is that proving co-equality? So, oh, so now listen. You, you just said the Father is the Savior, then the Son is... So that means we have two Saviors? We have, yes, in different contexts. We have in different so contexts. If we have two sa Saviors, are, are they not equal? Ah, ah. Since, since they are both... Listen... <laughs> Since you say we have two, two saviors, does that not make them equal, according to, to you? How can they make them equal? Because people can save in different... Listen, people can save... Let me... No, 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 no. Listen, I'm surprised I'm asking this question. If the president... Let me, let me explain that to you. If the president sends the vice president to stop the war in, 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 in Kaduna State... You can say, oh, the vice president saved this thing. You can also say... Wrong analogy. The, that is very wrong. It's not wrong. Not vice president. Listen. The context. President, uh, listen, listen. That is, that is pretty wrong. But now, vice is not the same thing as president. Now you said that we have two saviors. In different contexts. Listen, let me finish. Listen. You, you didn't say vice savior. Yeah. You said we have two seconds. saviors. Two saviors. I like to stress this. Two saviors. None of them is is the vice. You you just said that both of them are saviors. Does that not tell you that they are both equal? No, it doesn't tell you because so in context you can't have okay. to. Okay, you can believe anything you like. You just told us that we have two saviors. It is on record. You say we have two. If you have two save saviors, it means they are both equal. Can you hear me? Time is up. Time is up. That's what you said. Two saviors was what you said. Therefore, they, they are equal. Okay, so okay, time is up. Time is up. Am I on? <laughs> yeah, you're on. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay, now, bro, J, I mean, um, bro, J, now it's your time for uh, your second cross-examination, and you have five minutes. All right, uh, I just want to pick up on that, that you said that if we have two, if, if death, having two saviors, you cannot differentiate any context in where two things can be used, but in context, and you have to also agree that Moses is God, because the Bible says he was Elohim, and that exactly was Elohim to the people. So, and the Bible also tells us that the ones, the word, the prophet, the words came to the prophet <coughs> were also God, the same word Theos used, that it is not written that these were God. So, if Theos, since the father that is called Theos, the way Jesus is called Theos and Moses is called Elohim, that means that we, Moses is co-equal with God. He's co-equal. You see, that's your reasoning. You see, that's the problem because you never want to, want to appreciate context. So now the question now is that do you now agree that Moses has to be God? And then those people that the word of the Lord came to that were called gods, Theos, the same word used for the Father. Do you have to, do you have to agree that they're also equal with God? Do you agree? There is nowhere that Moses is God. A translation could use that word God. It doesn't make Moses God. All right? Moses in, himself was caught by, by God. That is the point God. I'm making. Let so me move on. Let me move on. Don't worry. I have five minutes. There's no you, point. You, yeah. There's a point. You, you because just context, said, you've just proved the point that there's context and you're not admitting that Moses is God. That, okay, likewise, you, you said there are two saviors. In different contexts. In different contexts. There context. is no context here. You you can't have two saviors in the matters let me, of so, salvation. So, let me ask you a question. Let me, let me ask you a question. That, let me ask you a question. Yes. The way Jesus Christ is called Lord in the Bible, is that the same context in the way the Father is called Lord? There are two Lords there. The Lord said unto my the Lord. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> you see, I'm I'm I'm, 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 yes. I'm I'm quite it's quite unfortunate, but I will go on if you think so. When David said the Lord said unto my Lord, one Lord meant yes. Master, the other one meant God. Go and research it. They are not two the same. No people. research is okay. there. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, my Lord okay, means wait, wait, they, they are equal. Okay, fine, fine. My, the Lord said to my Lord. I'm asking. The Lord. I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm asking. This is interesting. Okay, okay Moses said. Eh? I said, Monday, then please do not bend the rules. Based on what you have said, Abraham has to be God. Because Sarah called him curious. Lord, the same word, Jesus was the, used to refer to Jesus, and the same word he was used to refer to God. So do you agree that Abraham, when when Sarah called him, uh, my curious, my, my, my Lord, he was God? Do you agree? 
OJ, no, no, words have more, more than one meaning. Listen right. It's a question I asked you. Words have more than one meaning. Oh, okay? oh, now you accept context. You accept what are you context. talking about? Words have more, more <laughs> than one meaning. Thing. Okay, let's move Listen. on. Let's move on. How many meanings do I have? Uh, myself? Pause, please. Pause, please. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to bring down the amplitude. You have you have two minutes and, and forty seconds. All right. Okay. All right. G um, on Monday, Jesus Christ said, "Well, you've just proved the point. You said has more than one minute. Anyway, let's go on." Jesus said he did not know the hour of his coming. Please explain to yeah. me how Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man as one person, and yeah. he claimed he claimed ignorance about something that he did not know and only the Father knew. You have to be able to meaningfully explain this thing without your 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 fully God, fully man. You said he's fully mm -hmm. God and fully man. So how come yeah. he did not know? Simple. Jesus knew when or knows when he was gone. The moment he said, "I don't know the hour of my return." That was the human humanity in him speaking. <laughs> you see, you may you may laugh. You see, listen. It, can I finish, please? Can I finish? Can I can I finish, yes, please? Yes, finish. You may you may laugh, you may argue, you may disagree. The point is, at different points in time, Jesus spoke as God and spoke no, as man. Okay, fine. Let me know. But the listen, point here, no, I, I heard your point. I don't have time. I, I've heard your point. But the point here is that you're claiming that. Except you're saying that the God was a different person from the man. If it was one consciousness and one awareness, if the humanity did not know, did the, did the divinity not know, did the God side of him not know, are you saying that that God listen, side of him did not know? That's my question to listen, you. Now, listen right. <laughs> I started by saying that Jesus knows when he will return. So he knew, but listen, his humanity listen. was... He humanity did not know, but listen his divinity knew. Listen to me. Listen to me. This was prior to the cross. Again, I, I keep saying that Jesus spoke both as God and as man. It doesn't he matter. He said he did not know. He said the son. Listen. He said the son does not know. Not the human humanity. He said the son. Each does time not you know. hear the son, each time you hear the scripture say the son, it is referring to his humanity. Ah. Uh, yes. You just each time fact, you hear the have, son. How can you say that you just contradicted your? So many things are just going to shoot yourself in the foot. So anytime he says the okay, son, is his humanity? The son of God. Is his humanity. Listen, the Son of God deals more with the humanity of Christ. Yet, the same Son of God shows that he is, he is God. Yes, we, we say again. God. And, uh, the listen again. Of, listen explain. right. Listen I'm right. Listen right. He's God. Listen so, you're repeating listen that he's God to me. Is, listen. Is redundant now, listen well. Because I've acknowledged that. Listen well. Okay, listen well. <laughs> the Son of God refers more to the humanity of Christ. Because he was yes, man. The, listen, yes. Yet the Son of God shows that he is, he is God in a representative sense, not in the sense the Father is. Be, listen, be, because the Son of a man has to be a man. <laughs> the Son of a the man, son of man depend has on to be the, man. On the yes. Father for life. So the Son of God has to be God. <laughs> God has different contexts. The Father is the only self existing one. He says, I live by the Father. If it's okay. God, why is he living by the Father? Jesus is self existing. And he lives well, by the Father. Well. But he said he lives Jesus by the Father. Jesus is self existing. <laughs> All right. You are dealing with the, the one child, not the God Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, bro, Monday, now it's your turn to um, to ask you. You have five minutes. Five minutes. Hello, is that what? I didn't get that. The line is breaking. I so, say yes. Now it's your turn to do your own cross examinations. You have five minutes to ask him your questions. Can't get you. Hello. Are you Are you hearing me, bro? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you very well. I don't know. I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Monday, we oh. can hear you. Oh boy. Oh, maybe he has to go in and come out again. Maybe he doesn't. Know. I don't know. I, but... Oh. Maybe okay. So, can now, you hear us? Now... Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. I said you have five minutes. You can start now to ask your Good. question. Five minutes. Put your one. In John 5, 2, 3, Jesus speaking said, As you honor the Father, even so are you to honor the Son. John 5 what? You, John 5, 23. All men should honor the Son, okay. even as they honor the Father. Yes. All men yeah. should honor the Father, the Son. Yeah. All men should honor the Son. Yeah. Even as they honor the Father. Yes. 
What's your question? What, what does that speak of there? It simply means that as you have shown the father or, um, honor, mm. also show the son honor. It has nothing to do with equality. If you want me to answer that in details, I can start reading from verse 21 where it says, For the father is so, a... Listen, listen. So if the father, if the fat father is greater or lesser or whatever thing yes. than the son, yes. how come we have to give them equal honor? It's not equal honor. You are the one conjecturing that. Read what he says. It says, For the father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment. So you still see the yes. same thing again. He is committed. Oh, and, Jay, stop denying and, wait, hold on, no, 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 you are, you are, wait, no, five, two, three. You ask As me you honor a, the father, ask even me. so, are you to honor this? Ask me a question. Honor the son, because, even so, you have to honor the, the father. Ask me a question, because no. many of you read, want to isolate context without looking at the background. Look at what he said before. It explains the next verse. He said, he has committed all judgment into the hands of the son. So he's, he's that makes the son equal. That makes the son equal to so, so, the father. So, yes. so when Pharaoh committed the, everything, the father does oh my is, gosh, my does. goodness! So when Pharaoh committed everything to Joseph, it made Joseph equal with Pharaoh. When he committed everything to Joseph, it made Joseph equal with Pharaoh. Come on now, why can you make this kind of argument? It, it, it doesn't that argument you can't make that argument okay to you it does not make sense it doesn't but that is very clear Wait, as all you... men listen you can't deny this john 5 2 2 3 as you honor the son even so are you to honor the i'm father. not denying it i'm only just explaining to you that yes if you honor... and i'm not showing you that it is equal it is honor. not you are the one adding equal that honor. you are the one as injecting... you honor the son even so are you to honor the father even so even so, meaning equal. Even not, no, so. no, 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 no. It's just saying, as you have honored the father, also give honor to the son. Then what is the no, relevance? What is the that's relevance what it, of committing? It's by, by, listen, Ojay, listen. <laughs> listen, that verse that I will read the son, not the father. Not very well. As you honor the son, as you honor the son, even so, are you to honor the but father? But he says, start, says start there with saying that he committed judgment to his hands. You're not looking at that part. You, are, you want to isolate a verse and do isolation. It doesn't work that way. Read the preceding verse. He said the father doesn't okay. judge what he has committed. I have read that scripture he committed over and over all judgment. Over. He committed it to the hands of the son. He gave it to the son. He conferred it, showing that the father is even greater. The point you're even making is helping to buttress the my point. Fact, the fact that the father left judgment in the hand of the son means that the son is equal to the so, so the fact that Pharaoh well, left listen, judgment in the hands of Joseph every means judgment that, made wait, 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 wait. is the same as the father making it. Okay, so so Joseph was equal to Pharaoh because he left all judgment in Pharaoh in Joseph's hand, right? Yes. Yeah, you, that you see, Dev, uh, thank you. I'm happy people can listen yes, to what you just said. Is, that doesn't yes, make yes. any sense what you have just said. What you have just said has okay, proven that, that means Pharaoh and Joseph. The answer is yes. It's yes. So Pharaoh. Yes. The, oh, no, the one who is sent. It's not equal with the one that sent him. The one who sent is greater okay. than the one, the one who sent. God. God sent God. God sent Jesus God. Jesus is God. The Did Father you... is, 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 is God. So, it is one God manifesting in three persons. Therefore, God is the Father. The Father is God. The Son is God. God is the Son. Uh, but he says, God, you're God. God. Anyway, it's, God not my time. It's, not, it's not my time to ask questions. I would have, I, I would have said you should explain god your god one is god but yet one god has another god over him that's quite interesting though anyway you well, keep going i'm sure i'm sure i have some time i don't really know so if you have any more questions but no, no, i'm done no, i'm done yeah i'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm done three seconds hello i'm done yeah i'm done okay thank you yeah this was a fair one <laughs> not as a <laughs> all right so thank you for that so that concludes the formal debate. Now we want to move into the Q&A session um, from the audience and I've been getting some questions. So, Russell, we're not seeing you though. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Give me one second here to collect some more of the questions. All right. So once again, if you are listening and you have a question, uh, please just tag tag my name, and then uh, I'll get get them and put them together. Okay. So I have a few already. Let's begin. So the first question is, and each of you can answer this one. 
um, two minutes, please. Does Jesus have dual nature? Does he exist before time? Does Jesus have a dual nature? And did, well, let me rephrase it. Did he exist before time? Bro, and, and Broje will start, and then Bromane, can you, you can answer after that. Bro, Broje, does Jesus have a dual nature, and does he, did he exist before time? I don't, I don't believe that Jesus Christ has a dual nature. Uh, before the Word was made flesh, Jesus Christ, the Bible is very clear about it, really, was the saints of God, was the Word of God. That's how he created the world, through his spoken word. That word was embodied as a human being. That, man, that, that word that was made flesh, that flesh was a man. It wasn't, it wasn't man and at the same time 100% God. Everywhere you see them describing Jesus Christ, you see that as a man. The Bible says we have one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Jesus Christ. It didn't say the God, man, Jesus Christ. Everywhere you see that. So the dual nature is a fabricated, um, is, a, is a fabrication. And I've yet to see, Monday wasn't able to show us any text that says so. Yes? So as the word of God, yes, Jesus Christ had pre-existence. I agree. That is how God created the world through Christ. He spoke the word. You can see that in Genesis. You can see that in John 1. But when that word became flesh, that word was man. Still divine because it came from the substance of God. But that word came as a man. Fully man. But God dwelt in that man. That's why I said, the father lives in me. So that dual nature is a, a fabricated... Um, um, you can't find it in the scriptures. That's my answer. Uh, Bermonde, does Jesus yeah. have a nature and did he exist before time? Jesus has a dual nature. He has a dual nature. Again, Isaiah 9 6, Colossians 2 9 2 8 to 10. Isaiah 9 6, Colossians 2 8 to 10 clearly shows us that Jesus has dual nature. For unto us a son is given, a child is born. A child is born. I will share this again. A child is born. That makes him man. Now, that same child will be called the mighty God. That makes him God. Therefore, Jesus has dual nature. Colossians 2 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, who being in the form of God, Meaning, Jesus is both God and man. Then, did Jesus exist for time? The answer is yes. Okay, next question. And same exact format, two minutes for each, I mean, two minutes per question. So, you have to share. Okay, uh, Bro, Jay, in what form did Jesus exist before time? Okay. As a person or as a word? Just in what form did Jesus appear before time? As a person or as word? As the word of God. He was an attribute of God, as Tertullian rightly said. He was part of God as his thoughts, his the makeup of God that was expressed in, in his word. So, Jesus Christ existed as an attribute, as a part of God the Father himself. Not as a distinct person. Just as the words I speak to you are not a distinct person from me, but are not me per se, but one that expresses me. So, that is my understanding of how Jesus Christ existed. And I showed that clearly from the Greek manuscripts. Go and read. I, I did uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. In, in the original where the saints, it calls Jesus Christ the saints of God. And if you go read the book of Psalms, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. It's very clear. And that was who Jesus was. So when the Bible says, yes, by whom, when it talks in Hebrews, and says by whom, by the Son he created the world. Yes, it is true because that this Son you're looking at now that was flesh, was that spoken word in which God used in creating the worlds so there's no conflict so yes there's one god and he's the father creating through his spoken word and his spirit if you go to genesis uh, chapter one uh, you see god the father in chapter one there you see the spirit of god in, in in verse two and the word of god jesus christ coming forth to go create light so it's that's my understanding of how uh jesus christ existed as a as a word of god as an attribute of god not as a person distinct from the father and just to add that is why you will never find any conversation between anybody called the son of god in the old testament never find for the thousands of years you will not see any god the son talking to anybody because he never existed as god the son you will not from find Mon one from monday did jesus in what form did he uh did jesus christ um, uh, um appear before time as a person or as both hello i'm here both existed both as the word and as a person. How do I know? John 1.1 1, 1 said the word in the beginning was the word 
and the word was with God, and the word was God. And that word is Jesus. It goes on to say, and the word was made, was made flesh, meaning that Jesus was both word. Now, to show that Jesus was also a, a person distinct from the Father from time, Philippians 2, 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Thank who you. being in the form of God. That means he was also a person. Thank if, you. if Christ was, was just the word or, or thought, how come he does the mind? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, this is going to specifically uh, Brother Monday. The question is, are you saying that Jesus gets into character when he chooses? That means, are you saying that Jesus Christ chooses to be God or man whenever he, he pleases? He doesn't choose to be anything. He, he only speaks. Not, not, not choose to, to be or not, not to be. He only speaks as, a, as God and as man at different times. Not, not, not that he acts, or acts like God here yeah, and acts like a man here. Yeah. He only speaks as God in one spot and speaks as, as man in some other spot to, to show his true, his true person. Thank you. Uh, this question is to Brother I, I, OG. I would, okay, I thought I got a chance to also... Okay, fine, no problem. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I could be, be very brief about, you know, that yeah. question is very um, important, but I'll be very brief. Again, it goes to show the problem of this dual Jesus that they fabricated. And again, if you press that question as to, you said he speaks as God sometimes. But how come that God did not know, even at that time? You see, that's what Monday is evading. How, if he speaks as God sometimes, that means as that God, he should have had knowledge of his coming. But he keeps hiding under the fact that he was a man, man. But what about that aspect of the God that he speaks of? But he said the son does not know. So, I mean, for goodness sake, it clearly shows that I mean that this is just a fabrication. If the son did not know, it shows that that was he was man. It was God that was in Christ. Notice that the Bible doesn't say God was Christ reconciling the world to Himself. He said no, God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, so this next question is for you, brother OJ. Okay. And the question is: um, Are doctrines built only? on explicit scriptures. For example, before Abraham was, I am, is not explicit. But when you explain it, it proves a truth you cannot deny. So are doctrines built on only explicit scriptures? That's a very good question. I like the person who asked, answer that question. Now, whilst doctrines may not be built on explicit scriptures, we cannot find our summations contradicting what has been explicit. So whilst they may not be built on explicit, the explicit must guide us in interpreting the implicit. For example, one of the ways I know the doctrine of the Trinity is wrong, because the doctrine of the Trinity contradicts the Shema, which says we have one God and he's the Father. But the doctrine of the Trinity says we have one God and it's three persons. There are three persons in one God. So my point is, whilst we may not build doctrines on explicit alone, those implicit should help, they, they should form complements, they should complement what has been explicitly stated. If our con conclusions are contradicting what are, are, have been explicitly stated, then there's a problem. Then everybody's going to say, oh, well, this is my revelation. Okay, let me give you an example now. Did Melchizedek prove me wrong that God is not a quadrinity? I am proving to you today that God is a quadrinity and there are four persons in the Godhead. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Melchizedek. He's the fourth and silent member of the quadrinity. Prove me wrong. You can't. And I will prove to you, this, by the same way Monday is arguing, he had no father, he had no mother, no beginning, he had to be God. He's the fourth person of the Trinity. How would you, how, the, what would you do with such a person? How can you now have any meaningful conversation or debate with such a person? It's subjective. So that is why we must be guided by the explicit. Then we will use the implicit to, to, to buttress the, uh, the explicit, not the other way around. Thank you. Next question says... Oh, this is, to, this is to you, bro, OJ. Okay, it says, Are scriptures not compared with scriptures to prove a doctrine? How then do you, OJ, prove your position on specific scriptures that align with your thoughts? Mm. Well, I don't really understand. Well, it's funny because um, I don't really know what should things be written for then again. If the Bible says, for example, we have only one God and he is the Father, right? Then 
We are comparing scriptures with scriptures. Yes, we'll compare. So let me tell you how I come to my conclusion. That's an explicit statement. We have only one God and He's the Father. You cannot deny that. It's everywhere in the scriptures. Jesus said, what? You worship, you know no what? For the Father seeks sought to worship Him. He said, this is eternal that they might know you, the only true God. So I'm comparing scriptures with scriptures now. I, I'm not just using one. Okay? So when we, I begin to see verses that now say Jesus is God... <laughs> Then I now begin to understand it in context because if we go to Hebrews, he says, oh, what does he say? He says, when he says the son, he's talking about the man. But that's just, he just shot himself in the foot. Why? Because Hebrews said what? Thy throne, O God, said unto the son, it says. But I thought one they just said it was man. But he said unto the son, it says. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. But then, look at verse 9. Therefore, God, your God. So, you, you see, you then have, this is how you compare scriptures with scripture. How do you rationally explain that one God has another one that is God over him? Over him? It clearly shows you that the context in which one is called God is not the same context in which the other is called God. And I showed that from the Greek lexicon. One means God, meaning the only true God. The other one means God in terms of a representation. And the Bible says he's the exact representation of his being. So that's how you reconcile scriptures with scriptures. Thank you. <clears throat> This next one is for Brother OJ. And once again, to those who are listening, if you have questions, just type them up in the comment box and tag my name, Russell Oyewole. Tag me and I'll see them and add them to this list. Okay. Uh, Brother Monday, this is for you. It says, when Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Can I, as someone born of God and with the nature of God, and who expresses that nature, say that if people see me, God's nature expressed, they have seen God. Okay, let me repeat that one more time. Can I, as a born-again child of God, with the nature of God, and who expresses that nature, say that if people see me, the expression of God's nature, claim that they have seen God the Father? So the point is, anybody can say anything. You understand that? So, the, the fact that a person can say a thing does not make it true. So any believer can stand up and say anything. So it does not mean that what he or she is saying is, is true. But the truth is, when Christ said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, for I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. He certainly speaks of equality and nothingness. Uh, can I? Yeah. Yeah, feel free. Yeah, you can so, jump on this one. so this is the problem. You see, this is the problem with not really designing and understanding context, and that's why I also address a question the other time. I mean, the, I don't even think one is understanding, appreciating the essence of this question. The question is trying to show that look, a person can actually express who God is by the very fact that that person is born of God and reflect the, the nature of God like a glass. The person will see the Father in him. And that question is trying to show you that the person doesn't necessarily have to be God to be able to say anybody who has seen me, you know, has seen the Father. He just quoted and said that he said, I am the Father and the Father is in me. But the same Jesus said, and you would also know that I am in you and you in me. And I am one with you and you are one with me. So if we're to go by that reason, then we should be God. Because the same thing he said on that day, you will know that I am the Father and the Father is in me. And I in you and you in me. And I am one with you and you are one with me. He said, Father, may they be okay. one as we are and on that day, what day is that? You 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 and don't, don't interrupt day, me. You, know what you, you have answered and on that day. And on that day, you, you know what don't day. interrupt me. That's not your inter no, you don't interrupt <laughs> you don't interrupt um, um, um when a person is answering a question. All right. So the day is irrelevant. The day is irrelevant. The point is this that Jesus Christ is using the same kind of uh, phraseology and expressions with regards to himself and us, the same way he uses for the father. So it is no big deal to say, Oh, he said Oh, Jesus said this, said this, he has to be God. He said, in the same way, it is there. He says, in the same way, I live because of the Father. Even so, anybody that eats me will live because of me. He, Monday is one who was just saying, just that. I said, in the same way, you honor the Father. In the same way, you honor the Father. So let's go by his, in the same way. Just Christ like said what? As I live because of the Father. In the same way. He that eats me shall live because of me. How can how can you now say the same one that he lives by? You say he's co-equal with that person. He's, he, he, I mean, doesn't I mean it doesn't follow. I mean, it, it doesn't. You. Uh, you, you, you can't make that argument. You can't. We have we have we have more. Okay, so this is a two-part question, one for each of you. Uh, we'll start with Brother, Brother Monday. Uh, the question is, where do we place Melchizedek or Melchizedek? Uh, it says by your criteria, he should be qualified to be a part of the Trinity. That's right. The questionnaire says, where do we place Melchizedek? Because by your criteria of Jesus and the way you've described him and you've said that he is equal with God, 
he said, okay, co-equal with the father, then uh, your qualification of him is also putting Melchizedek as a trinity. So where do we place Melchizedek? Melchizedek was a human being. For those of us who don't know and who are yet to study under the insights of the Spirit of God, what that scripture is saying is there is no record showing the descent of Melchizedek. Not that he had no father or no mother, he had, but there, there was no record to show where he came from. No record to show. Not that he was not a human being. He was the king of Salem. So if he's the king of Salem, it, it, it makes him a human being. Okay? King of Salem means king of Salem is a person. So that means there was no record to show his descent. Not that he, was, he had no beginning and no end. Meaning, no record to show his beginning and no record to show his end. Um, there's a problem. There's a problem there. Yes, I won't do well. I, I, that's not the the, the 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 point of the the argument that I would have loved to make in terms of the problem with not understanding context. I think that question just buttress buttresses the point that when you insist that Jesus has to be this because of this, the Bible says he remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. So if I were to blindly latch onto that, so it's not just saying that he's a man. So how can he remain? So and those that are saying that he was Jesus Christ, I want to dogmatically say that's not what the Bible says. It says he remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. I, I, don't get me wrong. Referring to Christ. Let me let me let me let me let me let me let me, let me, let me speak. Yeah, you, you have just a few more. Yes. So the point is that. You see, everybody can hold on to any form of blind dogmatism. In fact, that person should not even be asking about Trinity. It should be the quadrinity. And the person should make the point that there are four persons in the Godhead. So you see, we cannot build doctrine. We cannot build our arguments from conjecture. It has to. This is why it has to be explicit. It has to be doctrinal okay. teachings. Go to the next question, because the two, the same person asked both of your questions. Okay, yeah. Bro J says, please, please clarify: is the old, is the Holy Spirit equal with the Father or lesser? That's number one. Is the Holy Spirit equal with the Father or lesser? The Bible says that the Lord Jesus is that Spirit. And another scripture where Jesus said, He, Jesus, will send the Holy Spirit. So therefore, is the Holy Spirit equal with the Father or is He lesser? Okay. Um, there is, that question is a, is a funny question because there's already an assumption that the Holy Spirit is a distinct person from the Father or the Son. I don't look at the Holy Spirit as a distinct person from the Father of the Son. And I'm going to explain it this way. It's like you asking me whether my spirit is equal or less than me. My spirit is a part of my being. It's, it's, uh, that's why I would say the Holy Spirit, I look at the Holy Spirit as like the living DNA of the Father and the Son. It's an intrinsic aspect of God himself. So it's not like a person distinct from either the Father of the Son. That's why the Bible makes a, a comparison and says, As no man knows the things of man except the spirit that is in him, even so is the Spirit of God. Now the Spirit of God is, is spoken of as something possessed by the Father. That's why you always hear the Father say something like, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. He's not pouring out a, second, a separate person from him. This is something that is intrinsic and part of the Father. So the question is funny because it's not a matter of equal and less. The same way I'm not going to be ask, asking whether my hand is co-equal with me or my spirit is co-equal with my person. It's an intrinsic part of my person. So it, it's one and, and that's part of God himself. So Thank you. that's how I would, I would look at that. Thank you. This is for Brother Monday. The question is, the Father heals. He has given me the gift of healing. I pray for people and they get healed. Does that mean I am co-equal with, with, with God the Father? The Father heals and you pray for people and, and, and they get healed. In what yeah. name do you pray? That person prays in the name of Jesus. Showing that you are not equal with the Father. But when Jesus prays, he doesn't pray in any name. Check. Each time he prayed, he didn't pray in any name. Because he himself is God. So when Jesus prayed, he, he never prayed in, 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 in should I say, in the man's, man's name. He didn't pray in, in, in anybody's name. So he simply prayed because he himself is God. So, But when we pray, we have to pray by the name of Christ. To show that we are not equal with God. As okay. In there's, now. there's a part B to that. Part B of that question is, I am in Christ and Christ is in me. Does that yeah. make me Christ? Uh -huh. It doesn't make you Christ. It, it simply shows the union you, know, you share with Christ. Can I... 
Do you hear me? I'm done. Okay. I said, can I... Even with Christ, it only shows the union you share with Christ. Okay. Yeah, bro, bro. Jay. Yeah, so a real quick one. So I'm happy that these questions are also helping Monday to also understand context. So the fact that they always make, oh, Christ said, I am in the Father, oh, and the Father is in oh, me. Oh, Jay, stop talking about Monday, 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 Monday. I don't have, have to suit you, okay? No, I'm only, listen, I'm, we are, no, no, I'm I not saying have, you have to listen, suit me. I don't, have, I don't have to please you. Monday. So stop, stop saying it is it, it is a Helping me to do what? No, I'm, stop I'm it, not okay? saying it's helping you. I'm saying it's no. helping to. It's help. Okay, fine. It's helping. You cannot to... say what is helping me. Okay, it's not helping. Okay, I, I, I okay, let, okay, okay, fine. It's not helping you. <laughs> not helping you. But I say, okay, let me say this, um, because my, uh, um, I'm sure it will help the readers to still understand the confusion that would arise from Monday's situation. If you want to insist that because the Father says I am in the Father and the Father is in me, I am one with the Father. These are all the things Trinitarians and people using building, but these questions. I like the fact that they are coming because it goes to show that these statements cannot just be taken in isolation. We have to understand in context, may they be one as we are one. And can I just quickly chip in something? Look, you know, um, there's, there's a few other questions. Okay, all right, all right. You say what? I say, well, it's just a few seconds because we have okay, other go, questions. Okay, go, go on now. Maybe I'll chip it in somewhere. It's very fast. Somewhere later. Go on, go question on. Go on. To Brother Monday. Uh, sorry, the question doesn't make sense. Uh, one second. Um, and he shall speak to you. Oh, okay. So I'll just read it. I'll read it. And if you have, have any comments, Brother Monday, then feel free. If not, we can move on. So it's more, I think it's a comment. It says, And he shall speak for you to the people, and he shall be as your mouth, while you shall be to him as God. Moses was referred to as God. Monday said, there is nowhere Moses was referred to as God. But here's a scripture. Okay, I think the person was just making a comment that Elohim that, that yeah. you had said. Um, okay, so was, I think it was more a comment. It wasn't a question. Okay, um, we'll move on. Another question to Brother Monday. Okay, aha. It said, "Does it mean that Jesus was bipolar? How can he be 100% God and 100% man?" Yet he knows and does not know at the hmm. same time. How do you explain that? I have said from the scriptures that Jesus has dual nature. He has dual stuff. Okay? We may either accept it or we may have to just leave it. Isaiah 9 6, I will repeat that. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and he shall be called the mighty God. Except we see this, we will keep arguing from now till next day. Jesus was both God and man. And this question has, has been trashed like three, three, four times, three nights. Uh, yeah, but if you can be brief, bro. Jay, yeah, you but, you see, but you see, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but that's a very wonderful question. Monday is not answering the question. He's, he's, he's going with the, either you take it or leave it. But they're asking you a very practical question. How can one person who you say is 100% God and 100% man at the same time not know and know? It's a valid question. And the response is not just by saying you either take it or leave it. You cannot engage that way. <laughs> you have no answer okay, to the question. Listen, so okay, listen, listen, listen. Yeah. The point is, on. the Isaiah 9, 6, you say what? Oh, please you're, continue. Not, you're not answering the question the person asked you. You're just OJ, saying take it or I leave have it. Answered. It is up to you to see whether uh, I've answered uh, uh, it or not. He let, is both me, God and man. He spoke as man and, and spoke as God. Let me just make a general comment about the 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 the, 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 the um one of the points of the debate is that anyone can answer anyhow. At the end of the day, we are presenting our argument or our case to the people listening, per se. We're probably not, you're not going to persuade one another, but the people who are listening are the ones who will gain the most or gain the least. So if someone chooses not to answer, that is left to the audience to be swayed in either direction. So I, I, I appreciate your effort in trying to probe a uh, response, Bro OJ, but if, we, if Bro Monday doesn't want to answer a question, it's his uh, prerogative to do so. Just wanted to put that out there. Okay. So that being said, um, yes. Yeah, okay. Next question is for Brother OJ. Brother OJ. It says, if Kreos, if Kreos is Greek equivalent of Yahweh, if Kreos is Greek equivalent of Yahweh, is Jesus not then equal with God? Kreos. 
Yes, let me. What is Kudos? K Y. Kudos. Okay, yeah. Okay, Kudos. Yes. Oh. <sighs> Definitely not, because that is context. The person asking this question, context, and you see that's why I asked the same question. That if Kurios is, if, if, we, if we if we don't see context, like you don't see the difference between Lord and Lord, when Jesus Christ, when um, Abraham said, um, when Moses, uh, sorry, David said, the Lord said unto my Lord, the Lord, one is master, said unto my Lord, my God. If you don't see the difference, then by the same standard, we have to admit that Abraham is God. Because the same word Sarah used for him, Kurios, and by that person's question, is the same word used of Christ, is the same word also used by Yahweh. So you can't bend the rules now at the time. So but the person asking that question, the issue is context. Yes, go and look at the Greek word curious. You see that it has different contextual meanings, just like worship. When they say worship, it has different meanings as well. Just like God, theos, it has different meanings. You need to learn and study those different meanings, context, and see how it applies to these various parties. It can't just mean the same thing, so it doesn't. Except you're, you also want to admit, that, uh, agree that Abraham is God because Sarah called him curious, curious, using exactly the same word used for Christ and also used for God sometimes. Thank you. Okay, so this question is to Brother Monday. Um, you may have answered this before, but if you have, just please repeat, it, repeat the answer. Uh, someone else is asking. It says, in what form did Jesus exist before becoming man? In what form did Jesus exist before becoming man? Is this still with us? Okay. Do we lose him? No, he's here. I can hear. You. I can hear you. I can. Oh, I can I, hear you. I can't hear. I can. Sorry about that interruption. I think I wasn't hearing him. Monday. Hello. Okay, I'm here now. Sorry. Sorry about that. Russell, please go on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please go on. Sorry about the. Yeah. No problem. Okay. No problem. Next question is. Um, I'm not sure who this is to. But let's start with Roger, since the last one's happening to Monday. The question is, when did Jesus see God do anything? I'm not sure who this is for. But when did Jesus see God do anything? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Roger, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I, I talk, I talk, okay, yeah, I talk, who's that? Who's who's the question for? There, there was no name. I'm just throwing out there. When when did Jesus see God do anything? I'm not, I think this might be for the money. The person put a name. But when did Jesus see God do anything? If we don't understand the question, we can bypass it. And maybe it's the person who uh, who wrote it can rewrite it and rephrase. Let me move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. Okay, the next one is, if Jesus was God and man, does that not disqualify him as a savior? Mm -hmm. The reason I ask this is because I have to take a man to pay the wages of sin and not to God. So this is to Brother Monday. If Jesus was God and man, does that not, doesn't that qualify, disqualify him as a savior because it takes a man to pay the wages of sin and not God, uh, Brother Monday? The wages of sin can only be paid by God and not man. A man could pay for it, then the blood of bulls and goats would have done all of that. So it will take only God to save man from sin. It will not take man that has fallen to sin to save man from sin. So the last question is a wrong question totally. It will take only God to save man from sin. It will not take man that, that needs God to save man from sin. Yeah, that, okay. that question is so, 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 so apt. And, of course, the answer, I mean, it's very, very clear. The Bible says, as his brethren were partakers of flesh and blood, he too had to be partakers of flesh and blood that he may be the first amongst many brethren. He was completely man. If he wasn't, and, and that's such a very, very wonderful question that the Bible asks, he would not have been tempted. It, it would still not have been, we, we couldn't have been able to say that he went through the things we, we, we go through because the Bible says he was tempted in every way. If he had an advantage of being God, so God in any way above all, he was not a complete human being, then he would have had an advantage of us. Then we could have said, ah, it's easy for you to talk now. You are God a man. Do you know what we are saying? I'm the one answering the question. It's not, your, you don't, it's not the time of we are, we are okay, sorry, because time. I'm responding to a question. Okay, you understand? So, it clearly shows. That's, that's why the Bible says we have one mediator between God and man. The man Jesus Christ. He didn't say the, the God man Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the one in heaven now. That died and resurrected. He's the man Jesus Christ, the glorified one. That's the right hand of God. You know, so it's clear. The man Jesus Christ is God. Repeat it again. The man Christ is God. Now, if it will take man to save man from, from sin, it may not be a big mess. If it will take man to save man from sin, it simply means that all the proper of God will have not done that. It simply means that God will have saved man a long time ago. How will it take a man to save man from sin? Why did God have to save Christ if it will take man to save man from sin? It will take God who will come in the form of a man to save man from sin. Why did take man to save man from sin? Russell, I don't know if you took note of what you know that this is the second time Monday is answering the question. He's responding again. So do I get a chance as well? Yeah, yeah, I allowed it. I allowed it. Yes, please. Okay, this is going to be very quick. You see, there's so much confusion here. Now, on one hand, Monday says that Jesus Christ was God and man. You see, you see the whole thing here? He says he was 100% God and 100% man. Well, you just heard him now here express that confusion by saying that man was God. So make up your mind. What are you saying? Is the man God or there's a dual nature of him that is God? You say he was God and man. But you're not saying that man Jesus Christ is God. Come on, Monday. OJ, okay, I'm saying the same thing. All you need to do is to listen right. The man Jesus, I said, is God. The man Jesus is God. Meaning Jesus came in the form of flesh. And so what was Christ? Christ? Yes. So he came in the form of all flesh. So, but but that that so if the man did not know, why did he just not know the time was coming? Because that is to show his humanity. That was to show his humanity. You just said the man is God. You just said that the man is God. OJ, OJ, the man Jesus is God. <laughs> the man, 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 the man
Same thing. Jesus came in the form of flesh. But the flesh is God now. You just said the man is God. Okay, God manifested as flesh. Russell, let's, let's Simple. Go. Let's, let's go. Okay. It seems like I think the people listening have already gotten their answer from, from you. Okay. All right. So next question. We have a few more to go here. Um, this one is to Brother Monday. Sorry, Brother OJ. This is to you, Brother OJ. The person said, "I wonder why the Bible says the word was with God and not the word was in God." Well, you see. I don't think we should. Because, because we, I mean, let me, let me just explain. Yeah, yeah. We are co-equality. Yeah. And you're saying he's not co-equal with the Father, right? Uh, that more or less that God was in him. Mm -hmm. And why, how come John 1, 1 puts the word and the word was with him as opposed to the word was in him? Yes. I don't think it's an either or thing. It's just about the expression. For example, the Bible says that the woman was found with child. The child is part of that woman, but it was found with child. You see, so, uh, for example, you also hear Jesus saying that the Father is in me. And but you, you also hear things about the Father who has, uh, you know, who has, has not left me. The Father is with me. So, um, it, it, to me, it's not really a big deal to say, okay, yeah, because it says he was with God. It, it negates the fact that he was in God. Mind you, I think the first thing I would advise anybody to do research, the very first thing for me, because I would to get that blockade, that mentality out of your mind, that the word means a person. They will keep asking these questions, but you just go and honestly research what logos means. What does logos mean? What does it mean? Go and read it. I read it from the Greek manuscript. In the original, by the saints, it translated exactly like that. So, how are the saints of God with God? They are part of Him. So, okay. uh, it doesn't necessarily yeah, 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 look, yeah. Can I please? Yes, yes. That's, that question is to show clearly that Jesus was a distinct person from the Father and still equal with, with the Father. So the word was with God shows that he's a distinct person altogether. Yes, that's the word that, that, that was with, with God. Was God in the beginning? Clearly showing us that Jesus is equal with the Father. And the word was with God. Was with, 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 with God, meaning two things or, or two people. And that word that was with God was God, meaning Jesus being with God. Still means that Jesus is equal with, with the Father for his word of God. Okay, okay, great. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so this question is to Brother Monday. When Jesus prayed, who did he pray to? And if, if so, Sorry, sorry, sorry. When Jesus Christ prayed, who did he pray to? If he's also the Father, who was he praying to? Jesus prayed to the Father. Jesus prayed to the Father. And notice that when he prayed, he didn't pray in any name. And now because he said he's equal with the Father. Now to show us how to how to relate with God, he taught us to pray to God using a certain line of principle, starting with praise to God. So Jesus prayed to the Father. Yet he said he's equal with the Father. I have not said that Jesus is the exact person as the Father. So that person asked me that should tell right. Jesus is distinct from the Father, yet he's equal with the Father. Okay, my, my question to that's a very, very good question because it's a very simple thing. Jesus Christ prayed to the Father who is the only true God. <laughs> it's as simple as that. The word that was made flesh manifested as a human being. That man as a human being was not equal with the source from where he came. Because he came, because the word came as a man, he prayed like everyone was. And that's why Jesus would say, I turn to my father and your father and to my God and to your God. Even if you know Jesus Christ used the word my God more than any other person in the Bible. Check it in Revelation alone in one verse. You will see he never come without a pillar in the temple of my God. I shall call my God. Even Jesus sang his song, he wrote the song with Moses, the song of Moses and the song of Jesus. So the one God means the Father. So I mean it is it is clear that um, uh, when the Bible says that even if we, the Bible says Jesus is God, I mean that is not the argument here because we have clearly shown different contextual meanings of that word Lord and God. The issue is that is he equal with the Father? That is a question here. And, uh, I believe that explicitly we have seen that Jesus said he's not. He said, My father is greater than I am. That is clear. The man that you said is God. The man that you said is God said the father is greater than I am. So that's yes, that same man said that he is the Almighty God. He did not say so. Yes, that did not. He said so. Rich one eight. He doesn't like speaking with broadcast. That's not the father of God. That's not the father. That's not the father. No, the one who sits on the table is my father. Sorry. Next, okay, so this will be for both of you. You both get just a few moments to respond. The person asked, um, the person really stated the question. Oh, so let me ask it. It says, As the son seeth the father do, uh, the father doeth, so also the son doeth. As the son seeth the father doeth, so also the son doeth. Sorry, can you, can you? Uh, this is someone, uh, maybe in John. That's John 5 23. John 5 23. Very good. And it says, When, Jesus, when did Jesus see John the father? John 5 19. When go did go Jesus see the father do anything? As the son seeth the father do something, so also the son do the same thing. So the question is, When did Jesus Christ see? At what point? Or when? And what's time span? And when did he see him do anything? Let's start with Bramande. Hello? Yes. So what? When, at what point did Jesus Christ see the Father do anything? When did he see him? Jesus, Jesus had been with the Father from the beginning of time and before the creation of time. And the Father created the world through Christ. So if Jesus be the creator, does anything right now, is something the Father had already done from the beginning through him. So that Jesus sees the Father doing a thing, simply means he can do every single thing the Father does. So at what time did Jesus see the Father doing everything? From beginning and even before time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my answer to that is very clear. I mean, it's based on his humanity, the things the Father showed him. Because just as we clearly said that the Father shows the Son things and we show him better things. That to show you, that is clearly to show you that the one who exists as the Son had dependency on the Father for revelation. And interestingly, even after his ascension, this one thing people don't even understand. Read the first book of Revelation, it shows you that same link to the Father, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave unto okay, him. That does not answer the question. That does not answer the question, please. Let, let me let me really when you speak, I don't I, why are you so yeah, big at the He said the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. It's connected because it's about showing the Son. Why God why is God giving God the revelation? God is giving God Almighty. He said the revelation from Jesus Christ. So what is being revealed? God gave him to Oh, that's what was asked. Op, op, op. At what time? At what time did Jesus see the Father doing anything? At what time? Listen. At what time did the Son see the Father doing anything? That was what was asked. I answered Russell. Russell, please. You have to permit me because Monday interrupted me. There's a problem. There's a problem. There's a problem. Yes, I answered. You see, Monday doesn't want me to talk freely. I did answer the question and I said it was in his humanity. I explained how the Father was showing him things on earth. Then I went to Revelation to protest it. So I hadn't answered the question. Or Monday should stop interrupting me. That's already. He's not playing by the rules at all. When somebody asks a question, let the person answer the question. What's your turn? And respond if you don't like my answer. All right, Russell. Sorry. Go on. Okay. I will move on to the next one. Okay. So the next one is. Okay, this is for Brother OJ. Yep. The question is, I need clarity. If the Holy Spirit is not a different person from the Father, how come the Bible says the Spirit prays to the Father, and the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has his own mind that God searches? He quotes Romans chapter 8, 26 to 27. Let me read it. It says,
to the Father? Well, I think for me, I don't think the, the literal, the way uh, people are looking at this thing literally, I think they are not looking at the whole concept of the Holy Spirit in terms of how the Bible speaks about the Holy Spirit. I mean, Paul uses certain words like the Bible says, oh, oh, Peter said, I had to understand. So I'm not going to use that verse to say, okay, because Jesus Christ said, or Paul said, the Holy Spirit is searching, I will now say he's distinct from the Father. You understand? So, so Paul will write to just give us an understanding of how, like, how Jesus would say on that day, I'll give you an example. Don't meditate on what you're going to say when you brought before the council, because it's the Spirit of the Father that will speak in you. I just can't. Jesus Christ also said there's many things he's talking about figuratively. But when he when he sees them, you talk tell them plainly about the Father. I can't really understand how the Father will say, I will pour out of my spirit, and you say the Father's spirit is in is in us. Then you say that the Father's spirit is a different person from the Father. The way I look at it is I also ask you, so if I take off my spirit now and put it in an ant, or let's say or another thing to give an ant my nature, I will say that, that spirit is a different person from OJ. I, it, I find it very difficult to understand it. That's right. Let me tell you something there. Do you know the way I would be agree, I believe that Jesus Christ is a different person from the Father? Show me one place. If you can find a conversation between the Spirit of God and God the Father, I will believe that existing okay. But you will never find any. So right. you're reading, don't read it like you're reading it to you know, yeah. the Spirit of God is the Spirit, the Spirit of the, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. That's why it says my spirit, my spirit, not existing person from the Father. Oh, Okay, the Holy Spirit is a distinct person from the Father. To, the Holy uh, Spirit is a distinct person. Okay, okay listen, 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 the point is this. Hello. Fine. Now, now, the point is, we are talking about God here. First Timothy 3.16 says, and this is the mystery of godliness. That means you can never fully define God. You can never fully understand God. So that you are trying to use yourself as a test body to explain God. Means you can only learn yourself in this first error. You can't use mind or anything to explain God. You can't define God. You can't fully understand God. The God you can fully define ceases to be God. So stop using your, your, yourself as OJ. Put your, your spirit into an act. You are OJ, a creature of God. So God himself is bigger than your thoughts. This is that with man. All these things are impossible. But with God, all these things and all things are possible. So that you can get it means you have your mind. And with God, every single thing is possible. So don't use logic. Don't use your mind to define God. To walk. God is God. And you can't define God using logic. You can't. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, so a few more here. Uh, this is to Brother Monday. If God, so if he was God, he being Jesus, if Jesus was God, the Father, how can you say God died? Does God die? I like to think that some, some folks are not getting it right. Nowhere have I said that Jesus is the exact person as the Father. So that person I'm speaking, and I guess didn't get me right. Nowhere and no time did I say that Jesus is the same as that person as the Father. I have been saying that Jesus is a different person from the Father, even from the beginning of time. The man that died was Jesus, because he came in the form of flesh. So flesh could, could die, and that was Jesus died. It does not mean that Jesus wasn't God. He was God, John 1, 1, and the Word was with God. And that Word was God. That means before he came, he was God. And that means his true person is God. The true nature of Jesus is God. So he came in the form of flesh. So since he came in that form, he could die. Nevertheless, he remains God. Okay. And again, again, this is the context of what we're talking about here. So I think if we keep, answer, if we keep emphasizing on the fact that Jesus is God, 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 we can't get anywhere because we've all agreed. The issue is the context, it's equality with, and we have agreed that there are different contexts in which uh, God can be, uh, be said to be God. So I think the, the issue is, is more of equality. And please, can I just please say that he said that we cannot define God? I was not the one defining God. Jesus Christ defined God. He said God is spirit. And then I worship him, I worship him, spirit. And so for such, but the Father to worship him. So he already told us that. And he also told us, let, please let me talk. Let me talk. <laughs> let me talk. He also said, yes. God allows us to use natural things to explain him. And Paul did that. He said, as no man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man, even so does God. Only so does the spirit of God. So that's saying, oh, you can't define God, you can't know God. It's all just a matter of just what you, and the basic way of avoiding the fact. He said, God is spirit and he is the father. Jesus Christ told us that God is spirit and that he is the father. It's fair. He told us the what and who God is. So don't say Second Timothy 3 16 says, But well, this is the mystery of godliness. The mystery. A mystery is a thing you can fully understand. A mystery is something that is difficult to do. What? Understand? He said, so he that's the spirit. He said, he Not Second Timothy 3 16. Not Second Timothy 3 16. Not, that one was what God, has, what God has in store for, for, for us. That verse is for what God has in store for us. Not Second Timothy 3 16. So Second Timothy 3 16. It's clear. It says, and this is the mystery of godliness. Mystery, mystery. A difficult thing to, to do what to understand. So I have this. He told us who God is. Jesus God is the Father. Yes, okay. and, and he's, he's not the Father. Father. He's not the Father. He's not the Father. Uh, uh, I have to come in here. I have to come in here. Okay, the, we have just a couple more here. One is to, okay, this one is to Brother OJ. The question is, let us agree that Jesus Christ pre-existed in God. Let's let's start there. Yep. That Jesus Christ pre-existed in God. Yep. Does it mean that he can't exist on his own, number one? And so number two, while he was with, sorry, while he was the Word of God and part of God and was what? Sorry, sorry, I missed up the question. Number one is, doesn't mean he can't exist on his own. Number two is, while he was the word of God and part of God, uh, was he equal with God? That's number two. There's three parts. So let me just let, let me give you those two. So you start to ask the third one. All right. So number one, he can't exist on his own. And number two is, while he was the word and part of God, was he equal with God? All right, please. I permit me to just answer this question with the same question I, I, I presented from uh, Tertullian again, because I think that is just answers the whole question. Of course, first of all, are you asking me, can my word, for example, exist uh, without uh, outside of me? My word, I am the one in control of my words. So I can speak, my word doesn't have, that's why Joshua said, the human voice cannot do anything of his own. The word was sent. What did the Father say? The word which proceeds from my mouth shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish that which I have set it, and shall prosper. And that was Christ, because Christ, that word, became flesh. So that flesh is existing now, independently, as a person, distinct from the source, because that word has not become flesh. That's why Jesus Christ said, not my will, but your will. But prior to that time, you will never see any God, the Son, talking to any God, the Father. He did not exist as a person, distinct from the Father. And to answer your question, doesn't mean so quickly. Please, let me again. The Trinity said, we should not suppose that there is any other being than God who alone is unbegotten and uncreated. How can it be that, except the Father who is who is older on this account, should be more noble than the Son, the only begotten Word? That God, which did not require a maker to give it existence, will be much more elevated in rank than the Son, which had an author to bring it into being. The Father, this is very instructive. The Father is the entire substance. That's why Jesus Christ recognized him as the only true God and removed himself from that category. Because what the Trinity is true, the Father is the entire substance, but the Son is a derivation and a portion of the whole, as He Himself acknowledges, My Father is greater than I. So you see, it's so clear. This ancient writer, they understood these things clearly. It's not all this fully God, fully man. He's he said
I'm not saying that reports. So I was number one. I, I, I said the one that took my existence on his own. I did explain my reward. The, the, the word of God, as I'm speaking to you now, my this word I'm speaking, they are not a distinct, they are distinct for me, they are not a distinct person for me. If I'm able to embody my word in the form of a, a form, let's say I, I gave that example before, like if I created ants, and I'm able to embody my word to become an ant that my word can in the form of ants extend who OJ is to me, to ants life. That ant will have a distinct personality from me from the to that time, my word was a part of me, and I took an interesting part of me, not a distinct person for me. Answer them clearly from the second part. Okay. Okay, now, does, are your words equal with you? My words are not equal with me. A, a point of point of point of proof. I send my word. My word cannot act independent of me. You see that? So my words, my word cannot be equal with me. Because my word cannot do anything of its own. And that's why Jesus said the same thing. He has to depend. That's why every time Jesus speaks, he's always taking it back to the Father. This one cannot do this. I don't so, to myself. so it's all about the same word, being made flesh, expressing that same thing. The, the, the third part of it won't apply to me. Because the third part is, does it mean that the moment the word becomes flesh, he stops being equal with God? So I mean, we already answered that in part two. Uh, but uh, Monday, do you want to jump in this question? Yeah, quickly. I'd like to note from what you just said, one wrong thing you have just said. I'd like to point out that the Savior, Christ, was not created. Since the I laid that out, Jesus was not created. That's number one. Two, the scripture is quoting where Christ said, I, I do nothing of myself. He didn't say, I do nothing by myself. He said, I do nothing of myself. Simply meaning that everything he does is about the will of the Father. It does not mean that he cannot do anything by himself. How do I know? I read John 5, 19 and John 5, 2, 2, 3. Since whatever the Father doeth, so the Son doeth likewise. So that scripture uses the preposition of and not by. So OJ should not get it wrong. Jesus did not do anything. Not do anything. I just said what you said. I said. So it's not relevant because what you're saying is that's what you said. No, no, no. That's, that's the... I just said Jesus cannot do anything by himself. I said of himself. I just said he cannot do anything by himself. And of himself means of himself means doing the will of God. No, no, it depends on the Father. That's why I said I don't judge by myself. If I said I, I, my judgment is not is not of myself. He relies on the Father. The Father let you see that he trusts in the judgment of the Father to give him direction. He doesn't trust in the judgment of anything. For he himself is the judge. Uh, uh, he himself is the judge. Okay, so we have, okay, we have one last question. Then we're going to go into our closing statements. Thank you, because um, I'm looking at this and there's no okay, good, no more questions. Okay, last question. Uh, I think you've already answered this one, but let me just ask it again. It says, Yahweh in Hebrew was, oh, it's the response to you, okay. Yahweh in Hebrew was translated to Krios in Greek. And this Krios in the New Testament is Christ. So it was translated from Yahweh in Hebrew to Greek. And in the New Testament, the same word is um, used for Christ. The person is asking why. I, mean, I think I've answered that question before. There are different contexts in any word. The word that is used has very, we have to understand the context. Curious has different meanings. Lord, um, in different sense. Like Abraham called, uh, uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord. Um, David called Abraham Lord. He also called God Lord. But th these all have different contexts. You know, so I think we need to study context to find out how these uh, words apply. We can't just say, if you use this word, it means this. So it has to be this and that. It doesn't work that way. Can I, 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 can I, I add? Yeah, yeah. Can I add this? Yeah. That simply means that Jesus is equal with the Father. I talked about first greatest thing, where Jesus was the one that led the life out of Egypt. It was Christ that did that. No, that, that's, that's a metaphorical statement. He did baptize. I didn't have time to address that. When he says they were all baptized, what we baptism did the, did the Israelites go through? They actually baptized. That's wrong. Okay. There was no wrong. Well, there was no wrong. Okay. Yes, it's not true. 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 I'm not arguing with you. I don't understand that it's symbolic. Okay, that's what's symbolic. Okay, let's have it. How did they baptize? How did they baptize? Hello. 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 Well, they said it was a symbolic. Okay, now here is Jude one five, mm -hmm. and and says I will therefore put you in remembrance. Do you know what? How that the Lord Jesus, how that the Lord Jesus, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, how that the Lord Jesus, how that the Lord Jesus, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, after what destroyed them that believe not. Is this symbolic? Okay, how that the Lord Jesus? Straw man, you've read the translation. That you, don't worry, let's look at the translations now. Let's look at the translations. You see, it's the same way. Let's look at the translations. 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 Okay, let's look at the translations. Yeah, let's read it. Just, just. Sure, let me see. Trust. Okay, so. Trust. Trust, let me hear. So King James says, listen to this, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Yes. Don't you know, don't you once knew this, how that the Lord has saved them, saved the people out of the land of Egypt, after what destroyed them that believe not. This Lord was God's father. And how do we know that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, how do we know? You see, so much translation okay. is going to make it. How do we know this? We know this from Hebrews 1. We know this from Hebrews 1. Paul clearly said this. God, who are in sundry times, in diverse manners, who spoke to the prophets and the fathers through in different ways, including this way, has in this last day spoken to us by the Son. Very clear. Mm. So in Paul's mind, every act mm. of that you see in the Old Testament that God operated mm. was the Father. He said what? Well, as in this last day, spoken to us. So if not the Son, already leading people out of Egypt and doing all this. Then why is Paul saying as in this last day, spoken to us? So if not the Father, okay. God. Okay. <laughs> there, there's, there's no point like that. I've just read it for you. He said the Lord. You think that the Lord is very well. You think that the Lord is very well. Yes. Is uh -huh. that Lord is very well. Oh, you think the Greek was ready to be in small and capital letters? Let's add it back to the place. Check the Lord who read. Who read. Listen. Who read. 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 Is written in small letters. What does that show me that? It doesn't matter what you're saying. It doesn't matter. matter. Yes. The Lord matter. you read now, listen again. Hello. OJ cannot deny this because he knows that, that Lord is right to pass. Small letter Lord. Small letter Lord. Small letter Lord. Everywhere in the future. Small letter Lord. Small letter Lord. Small letter Lord. I'm going to read the new translation and show you where the Bible says in the beginning of the world, the world was God and the world was a God. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. You're missing the point. You're missing the point. I am not missing the point. You are saying that if I am going to show you that Jesus existed on Monday. 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 Monday
Okay, has a way of saying this translation is repetitive. Let me quote from his own. Let's see the Lord. What Lord did you see there? Is that Lord eating the leaders or small leaders? It's not a thing. It's not a thing. This is a translation. And the word was a God. Do you accept that? 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 From statements that are clearly stated. That is why every one of the previous statements before Nicaea all based their teaching about God and the one God on first chapter 8 verse 6. But to us, but there's one God, the Father. It is an explicit text. And Jesus said, This is eternal life that they might know you, the only true God. Clearly establishing the context of the Father's Godhood that does apply to any other person, even Jesus. So all the references say that He's God, He's God. He said He's redundant. It's a waste of time. Because I only said that Jesus is God as well. The issue is the context. Is it correct called God? I clearly showed from the script, from, 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 from life event and from the, from the sake of practicality that if you want to go into this issue of looking at whether Jesus is called with the Father or whether anybody is called with anything, you cannot just use some isolated parameters. I didn't just say that, oh yes, it has to be the abilities. It has to be overall. We look at the, the we look at what you said, the father is nine. He was there, it was clear, you know. So you can't just say, like in the example I gave with the, um, with the students, if you saw that I, 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 when I did with the students, you can't say, oh, yes, you see two, it's quite common four because they have the same nature of numbers. Nobody does that. Everything has to be looked at as a whole. The same way I gave the example with the generator. Nobody says, oh, yes, yes, you see this generator, like one TBA, it's quite common this other one because they have the nature of the generator. It's insane. Nobody does that. You can never, in that case, you can this debate is meaningless. You can never arrive at anything that is greater or less. Why? Because you will always find a way of making something quite common with another. Or a dog is quite common with a lion because they both belong to the cat family. An ant is quite common with a butterfly because, you know, you just say anything. But for you, to also meaningfully engage and come out with a conclusion as to what is better, then we have to look at the father as a whole, not the children, direct from the children. And all the early taught fathers never, never had this false idea of individuality Jesus that was 100% God and 100% man. A very nonsensical concept. They have not been able to explain, but high on that issue of mystery because that is the only way they evade that reality because it suits them when they want to speak. They want to claim that when Jesus says something, they vaccinate and choose it's 100% man. When they lie, when they say, oh, very well, I'm saying, you see, that's God speaking. But then they get confused when they ask them, if you say it's 100% God, 100% man, why doesn't he know the hour is coming? Because why does 100% God side of him not know? Okay, when you say that 100% man side doesn't know, why doesn't 100% God side because at the same time, as one person, as a single entity, he's, he's God and man, then why doesn't that God side of him not know the hour is coming? The son does not know. All right? So this is a very clear biblical text at bottom. So I show that yes, we have to approach this thing from a holistic perspective if you want to consider who is greater than the other. And we have seen, it's not just a matter of saying, oh, we have the same nature. We've seen, but you explicit statements and implicit statements that the father is greater than the son. Mommy cannot indict me and say, I find it very, I, I won't speak when he says, I'm surprised that somebody that calls him to be How can you be? I feel the same way, but I feel the same way. And this is the problem, and that is why we have problems with Muslims. Many Muslims find it very disgusting, very specific, because of this false doctrine of the Trinity and this constant belief that the father and the son is going to be father. Everybody, the message of the gospel is that we have one God, the father, and we saw Jesus Christ himself in that Not creating co-equals with the father, just Christ said, what? I don't my father, 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 my very clear, implicit verses, apart from these three explicit verses I have just read, that it shows that Jesus Christ cannot be co equal with the Father because he's not self existent. Equal means, as we've read from the dictionary, it means um, co equal, it means equal with another or each other in rank, ability, and extent. And like the pointed out, no, the Son said derivation is a portion. As the Son himself recognized, the Father is greater than I. He said it, and that's true. Jesus said, What? As the living Father has sent me, and as I live because of the Father. You see that? In the same way, you will live because of me. How can you say that that's co equal with Jesus? We live by Jesus, we live by the Word. And Jesus says, In that same way, he lives by the Father. How can I be co equal with So these are implicit verses that show, clearly show that he cannot be co equal with the Father.
at the, at the temple. The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. That's another verse. More debated in one of our debates online because he 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 evaded the fact that the Lord God Almighty could not be the Lamb because if the Lord God Almighty was the Lamb, that distinction or the separateness of, of, of measuring Lord God Almighty and the Lamb would be meaningless because what is the point? He said the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. That's John saw two different things. Saw one as the Lord God Almighty, he saw another one as the Lamb. And we also see that, uh, like we said, Jesus Christ received revelation and in the, in, the, in, the, in chapter 15, he's writing a song. The Bible said they sang the song of the Lamb and the song of Moses and they worship God. So he said Jesus was part of them who was worshiping God in heaven with the song of Moses and with his own song. It is so clear. And at the end, in chapter 15, that's his song. That is, he shall put all, he has put all things on his feet and he declared that God who put all things on his feet is exempt dead. And when all things are put on his feet, even the Son himself shall be made subject to the one who put all things on him that God we show himself to pray that God be on our brethren. I think there's no to argue this. If we stay with what the scripture says, if we preach what the scripture says, we, we have this debate that we have one God, the Father, and we have his Son Jesus Christ. This is all the opposite. The Greeks all said this. One God, the Father, and one Lord Jesus Christ is only the So if we preach this and stay to it, there will be confusion in the Christ. There will be division. Have you ever heard anybody arguing that Jesus is the Son of God within Christians? That's the uniting factor that Jesus is the Son of God. Really, all the scriptures is there. The emphasis is that Jesus is God. Yes, mentioned one, two, three times, but the emphasis is that he is God's Son. Jesus said, Do you say that I blaspheme because I say that I am God's Son? This is because I am God's Son. You know, so brethren, I think we need to go back to the scriptures and believe what Jesus said. I am the one who said what he said. If I stand for God in heaven, and this was a matter of life and death, and Jesus Christ asked, let's say we're to hell as a result of this, and ask, this is your life and death. I have something to stand on. I say, Jesus, you said this. You said that your father was I can stand on that. What do you have to stand on? Jesus didn't tell him that he was going to call you father. He contacted that in realism. So let's stay with the word of God. I'm true to it. Thank you. All right. And that for the conclusion, close statement for about Monday. Ten minutes. Uh, please go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. Now, first thing first, I have said that a coin has two sides. You can't stick to one side of the coin to spice that coin. A coin has both a head and a tail. So just like that, the scripture is a two edged sword. You can't stick to one edge and deny the other edge. You can't take one, one truth to cancel out the other truth. That's what OJ is mean. I have never said that Christ did not say that the Father is greater. I will explain this in context. OJ is sticking to one edge of the scripture. The scripture we know is a two edged sword. A two edged sword. Every sword has two sides. You can't stick to one side of that sword and use that side to strike the other side of, of the sword. That's evil. You can't take one truth of the scripture to deny the other truth of the scripture. That is satanic. That's what, that's what OJ is doing here. You can't stick to one verse and do the others and then look away. That is not scriptural. You can't do one thing and leave the other when you show you two different things. We are going to declare the one counsel of God and not the power of peace. Our job is to share full truth, the whole truth, and not the partial truth. Now, OJ is saying, Jesus said, Jesus said, and that I made the proposed scriptures. That really sounds sense for me here. That's a like a big lie here. I have quoted scriptures of scriptures. It's up to Jesus to accept it or to reject it. Question one Did Christ be exist before time? The answer is yes. John 17 5. Christ said, They will find me with the glory I have with you before the world was created, before the world was created. So if Christ existed outside of time, it simply means it's equal with the Father. Who created heaven and earth? It's on Jesus. Colossians 1 16. Very clear. Who made the earth? Jesus. Who made the created it? Jesus. Who made all of your things? Jesus did. Who is the creator? Jesus is. So if Jesus is the creator, what then makes him not to be equal with the Father? Hebrews 1 8, God called Jesus God. Hebrews 1 8, and God said to God, God said to my God, and God said to my God. So that means the Son is Christ. So he said, and to the Son, he said, my God. That means that the Son, if the Father will call the Son God, that makes the Son equal to or equal with the Father. Is this scripture not in the scripture Bible? Hebrews 1 8, is that not in some scripture? Maybe we just let it that Christ was called God by the Father himself. So if the Father calls the Son God, who are we to not say that the, that the Son is not equal to the Father? Is the Father not equal to the Son? If the Son is not saying to us in John 5 2 3 and John 1, 1, 1 9, that whatsoever thing the Father does, the same thing the Son does. So if the Father can do a thing and the Son will do the thing, does that not make them equal? Again, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Christ. If Jesus is not equal to the Father, how come the fullness of God dwells in Christ? The fullness, the fullness of God dwells in Christ. Then how will Christ not be equal to God? If the fullness, fullness of God dwells in Christ's body, how then will Christ cease or not be equal to God? Again, Matthew um, 18, 1, 9, where Christ said, Go ye into the world and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. I thought Christ would have said, In the name of the Father and those thoughts. He said, In the name, not names, in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of their Holy Spirit. So if Jesus is saying to us that we can baptize people in Matthew 28, 1, 1, 9, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and in the name of the Spirit, it means they are equal. It is as simple as that. If Jesus proceeded out of the Father, it means he's God. It means he's equal. What comes out of God can be anything short or less than God. If Jesus is the Savior of the world, this night, we just said we have two saviors. Two saviors. That's what he said. Is that even true in the first place? And if it is true, does that not make them equal? If they are both the saviors of the world, does that not make them equal from what, from what we have said? That we have two saviors. But we know that we have only one savior, only one. We have two, and that one is Christ, and that Christ is God. So it is the, the, the Father of the Father of the Father Christ is God, and the Father is God, and the Spirit of God is the God. That is the issue, yes. And this issue is clear because of the absence of the knowledge coming from the Holy Spirit. If you don't understand God by virtue of studying under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can only speak errors. You can only talk errors and not and nothing Jesus told us that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. This Sabbath speaks of God who rested on the seventh day. So if he is the Lord of the Sabbath, it means that he is God. A third thing that he asked Christ, what is the name of God? My Christ said to Lord God. And to love your neighbors, and I will do so with all of your heart, your, your soul, and your spirit. In time, they ask Christ, why not again? Christ answered, stating that the only commandment we have is to love God. So, if you are to love God, I will be the late Christ. If you love God, I will not love Christ. And if you love Christ, I will not love God. In time, they ask Christ again, who is good? Jesus said, only God is good. Does that mean that Jesus is not good? And if Jesus is good, it means that Jesus is good. So, this is a style or pattern which Jesus uses every time he spoke right here on it. Or should I say, which
and he shall become the mighty God, and he shall become the everlasting Father. Here you have a woman being called the mighty God. It can only be God to become God. It can only be man to become God. So if Jesus came in the form of a man, yet we know from Scripture that he was God. John 1, 1, 1, 1, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Two more minutes. Hello? Hello? Yes, you have two more minutes. Two more minutes. Okay. In Ephesians 3, 1, 1, 9, it says that the love of Christ is the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 1, 9, the love of Christ is the fullness of God. What does that tell us? If the love of Christ is the fullness of God, it can only mean one thing, that the, that the Son is equal, or equal with the Father. If the love of Christ, again, Ephesians 3, 1, 9, the next thing we say is, I am not going to speak just, the love of Christ is the fullness of God. So if the love of Christ is the fullness of God, how then is Christ not equal with the Father? Isaiah 4, 5, 2, 3, it says, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth, and it shall not return to me, boy, but unto me shall every knee bow. And every tongue shall confess. We see this happening in, in, in Philippians 2 8 to 10, where it says that unto Christ every knee shall bow and shall confess that he is God. That he is God. And this is to the glory of God the Father. Again, there is no time you will find Christ without the Father, and you will find the Father without Christ. So if every knee will bow to Christ and say in the scriptures, it means that Christ is equal to the Father. For we come back to two verses. If we will bow to Christ, we are bound to God the Father. If we worship Christ, we are worshiping God. By the way, you can worship the Father until you worship Christ. By the way, you can know the Father until you know Christ. By the way, Jesus is the way, the way, the truth, and the life. It simply means you can. Hello. Oh, thank you, thank you. The 10 minutes All right. left. All right. Thank you, thank you, Brother Money, for that. So this officially concludes the uh, debate between Brother Money and Brother OJ. And once again, the topic was, is the Son of God co-equal with the Father? I hope that people that are listening were able to see the distinct points that were being brought up by both um, our, our contributors there. Hopefully they were able to present their case. The um, Bible says that we should always have a reason for the hope that is in us. And to be able to present that with meekness. Um, hopefully that was achieved today. And this is also something for all of us that are listening, is that whatever we believe, whatever position we believe, whatever it is, we should always be ready to give a response when they ask, someone asks us, why do you believe this particular thing? So with that being said, I thank, once again, thank you for everyone who's listening and brought the questions in and participating in this particular debate. I uh, hope you left uh, with at least learning something. Uh, I hope this wasn't a complete waste of time. Amen. But let's, let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to reason your word. Thank you for the opportunity to open up your word. We pray, Lord, that our hearts would continue to be open to you and your Holy Spirit, who indeed is the teacher that is able to open us all truth. Pray, Lord, that, that every confusion within us, Lord, that you remove and you fill us with your light and your truth in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all. Thank you for your Monday as well. And thanks, uh, thank you for the, um, the viewers as well. Uh, yeah. So we sign out now. Uh, God bless you all and um, have a wonderful night. Peace. Bye. Bye.